in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home Thank you for watching. Stay blessed. The concept of kingdom advancement is not a new concept in this house. We have um, dealt with different series at different points in time, attempting to help us understand what the kingdom is all about. And... Um, the concepts of the kingdom and how to advance the kingdom so we've we've taught several messages different dimensions different approaches but just a little refresher so that i'll connect with what i want to discuss today we have learned and for those of us who are just learning um there are two dimensions you may want to write it down again there are two dimensions to kingdom advancement every time we talk about the advancement of god's kingdom it is first and foremost important for every and any believer to be interested in this subject if you are not interested in the concept and the whole idea of kingdom advancement then it means you do not love god and you're not a contributor to the building of his kingdom kingdom advancement generally speaking refers to before i give you the dimensions um, it refers to any listen and every scriptural mechanism that is deployed to establish the lordship of christ listen please any and every scriptural mechanism that is deployed right to establish the lordship of christ first across the hearts of men or in the hearts of men and then across every strata of human activities any and every scriptural mechanism that is deployed like an arsenal to the end that the lordship of christ be established in the hearts of men and then across every strata of human activities that's the definition of kingdom advancement so we say we are advancing the kingdom to the degree to which we are making use of every scriptural arsenal it must be scriptural to advance the frontiers of the kingdom by this definition it suggests that there are two dimensions to kingdom advancement number one is establishing the lordship of the christ in the hearts of men this is very important you will want to write that the first dimension to kingdom advancement is the establishment of the lordship of jesus christ in the hearts of men and then the second dimension is taking the culture the principles and the ideologies of the kingdom and using them to transform society so the first dimension has to do with a spiritual reality establishing the lordship of the christ in the hearts of men and then the second dimension has to do with communicating his ideology across every strata of human activities it's important you know this the first dimension of kingdom advancement establishing the lordship of christ um, in the hearts of men will require what we know to be evangelism and discipleship i'm just doing a recap we have taught this the whole idea of what we know to be evangelism and discipleship they are the structures that were designed by god to bring men to bring the 
establishment of the lordship of christ across the hearts of men um there are all kinds of versions and understandings about discipleship and about evangelism and this is not in any way attempting to interpret it in the religious way that we know because for many people when we talk about evangelism or discipleship the concept has been so abused it's like an indoctrination into a denomination and their tenets that's not necessarily god's idea of discipleship evangelism and discipleship is the scriptural pathway to establishing the lordship of christ across the hearts of men then the second dimension taking the influence of the kingdom his culture his ideology permeating society when we are able to successfully do these two things then it can be said that the kingdom of god is advancing within a territory or in a dispensation my concern this evening this night is um, the establishment of the lordship of christ in the hearts of men i want to just zoom it a little there and um, help us to be very effective at doing this by god's grace i think that we understand the concept of influence and how to take the the light and the power and the culture of jesus christ across territories we've spoken about different mountains and how that we need to establish the value system of the kingdom but i think that many people do not know how to establish the lordship of christ across the hearts of men so i want us to look at a few things that i believe will be very very important daniel chapter 12 please verse 3 daniel chapter 12 verse 3 media we have a lot of scriptures today so please you'll be ready for that um this will be more of a study tonight i just want us to we'll pray later on but um i really want us to have understanding i like us to read together it's projected as loud as you can one to read and they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament uh-huh and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars so there is such a state where a man can turn many to righteousness it says they that be wise they shall be as the brightness of the firmament and they that turn many not few in god's mind he desires that every believer would participate listen in this dimension of kingdom advancement as far as the establishment of the lordship of christ in the hearts of men is concerned largely we have left this ministry to evangelists we have left this ministry to those we call the fivefold they are the only ones who make the altar calls they are the ones who print tracts they are the ones who do all of these things and then for those who even engage in what we know to be evangelical activities they largely do not do it with understanding they just do it um in honor of a a, a, a suggestion or a program by the church or some kind of structure that makes them feel spiritual you see the thing about the kingdom is anything you are doing that is not out of understanding you will not be blessed from it understanding is very important understanding is very important when carrying out any kingdom activity is is religion you see religion is an attempt to do spiritual things in ignorance and in the strength of the flesh and all through scripture you see that people who did even nice things religiously they did not receive any reward the system of the kingdom is such that you must take out time to understand the dynamics of whatever it is you want to engage in and then on the strength of that understanding you will now get up and act acting just because others are doing it acting just because you are told to do it acting just because you want to you know ease yourself of the guilt of separation will not bring the desired result that's why we do things for a short time and we do not have the impetus to continue the drive to continue because we largely carry out activities especially in the body of christ there's too much copying many people do not sit down to find out why why this why this why do i have to pray in tongues well i just saw apostle praying in tongues and i think he's good for me 
that's nice but a time must come in your life where you must have a personal understanding are we together why do i have to tithe i think everybody who i know to be rich is tithing so i should just do it that's not enough conviction is very important in the kingdom you must have a a sense of personal persuasion it produces restful confidence so no matter how sacrificial the activities are your conviction sponsors the strength to go through it lots of people do not prevail over the things they want to do because we largely act without conviction we copy one another we copy men of god we copy churches and then we do not have the strength and the emotional the grace to push it to the limit and to stay there until results are produced the lord will help us tonight in jesus name i i have been burdened especially in recent times um the lord has been putting this burden in my heart concerning the need for the body of christ to get back into what we have known in the body of christ as the ministry of soul winning are we together the establishment of the lordship of christ in the hearts of men you know sometimes it's like wear and tear we can fade off certain areas of concentration while pursuing others in an attempt to look for certain things we sometimes drift away from the things that represent the foundation the the pivot the epicenter of christianity and our mandate as given by god sometimes we can veer off sincerely but we veer off and then we find out that we are doing other useful kingdom things but we may miss out on that which represents the foundation of the desire of god all through scripture you see from the old testament to the new testament the lord communicating his desire to draw men who have been alienated from him are we together all through scripture he would speak sometimes through the prophets and um, liken a nation to a harlot that has left her husband you hear scriptures like draw near to me and i will draw near to you when jesus came he used different parables that suggested restoration the parable of the lost talent the parable of um, the, the prodigal son you know all kinds of um, um, expressions to communicate the father's desire to have the heart of people that have been rebellious to his way and his counsel turned back to him and i think that while it is true that this is not the only part of kingdom advancement this is a major part of kingdom advancement in fact sincerely speaking listen in order of priority kingdom advancement should first start with establishing the lordship of christ in the hearts of men first before the systems so if we have industrialization we have civilization as a use of as a result of the practice of the culture of the kingdom and we have people going to hell we have people who are not serious with god you know that that is that is um that is not balanced is that true god desires first and foremost more than civilization more than prosperity more than education more than you know people who have come into the working knowledge of the principles of the kingdom god wants the hearts of men the hearts of men to return to him in truth and in sincerity altar calls in many assemblies is almost not observed again and the average believer may be able to boast of other spiritual activities like tithing like giving you know like service in the house of god these are very important aspects of kingdom activities but many people cannot tell you that they have contributed actively to winning and establishing souls everybody say winning and establishing souls say it one more time winning and establishing souls every single one of us here if i ask you to pick up the mic and tell me your experience you will tell me of one person here and there 
who insisted until you came to the knowledge of Christ and for those who were already born again one or two people who had to um, sacrificially follow you up until you are now grounded to a, an extent in the things of God and you are helping others too but many of us are unable to extend that spiritual benevolence to others so we sit back enjoying everything that um, has come to us through redemption and not extending it to others and most times we tell ourselves I'm not a man of God are we together I'm not a man of God so during a corporate evangelism like we have it we can walk around and talk to people but as a personal revelation that part of your kingdom responsibility as a believer as you'll be learning shortly it is a responsibility listen soul winning establishing the lordship of christ in the hearts of men is the responsibility of every believer it's not a suggestion to choose if you want or not it's, it's, it's like breathing it is part of the component of your spiritual existence and if we are not taught and pushed into that point then there will be no continuity a time will come you will find a whole generation bankrupt of spiritual things do you know do you know this was the mistake of many of our parents they loved God they loved Jesus Christ they kept the values of the kingdom but they did not think it to be such a big deal to pay attention to transferring the Lordship of Christ to the heart of the children so you can find a man and a wife um, you know his wife who love God so much but you will be surprised maybe a pastor and his wife and then you will be very very surprised that they have never actively preached to their child do you know talking to people about spiritual things is not the same as saving them you can discuss tithing you can discuss rapture you can discuss hellfire and heaven that's not preaching so that we are around people discussing the things of God which is good and very valuable but have we paid attention as to whether this person that I'm talking about has my son has my daughter has my friend has my roommate can I truly attest to the fact that this person is saved and if yes is this person actively being established and grounded in the things of God it's a great concern in the heart of God many of us don't care so once you have a child who is doing well in school whether or not he's a serious Christian he can come to church do you know many parents do not talk to their children about God the children can learn around but to have a day when you preach to your child and lead him to Jesus Christ no we leave them to other people are we together now do you know it's so embarrassing when the closest people around us have to walk with us and never get to know Jesus and then after many years someone somewhere will be the one to come and save them how many children are taught about Jesus but never given an opportunity to declare his lordship look talking about Jesus does not save men talking about him talking about spiritual things talking about rapture talking about heaven talking about grace talking about whatever it does not save men men must understand and receive the gospel of salvation and be given an opportunity to declare their willingness to accept his lordship so there are so many people around the body of Christ but they are not saved and let me tell you what hardens them because they've been around the things of God so much they know scriptures are we together they can talk they've done so many things that look spiritual and so they convince themselves that by those activities they are saved they are not saved at all do you know let me tell you even coming out marching out to come for altar call does not save men that's not what saves people there's nowhere in the Bible that says the moment you come out in an altar call you are saved no these are just representations that have been adopted by the body of christ
to help and guide people to be serious about their decision and then to have a way of getting their details and follow them up but that's not what saves people in fact let me surprise you reciting salvation prayer is not even what saves people because the bible says you must believe you can stand and you are joking you are just talking because you have to repeat what you have been told and not be saved and go back and you are still hell bound and a candidate of hell soul winning soul winning is not just saving people's souls soul winning is establishing them let me emphasize this when you get people saved and leave them the way they are they will not grow and chances are that their, their, their lives eventually many of them will derail and even get back to their lives establishing the lordship of christ is more than just saying a salvation prayer so you guide someone and he says lord jesus you know i am born again and you are happy you say this guy i, I saved him he's my soul the key is establishment 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 very very important that believers not only come and bring people but see to it that they are established All through scripture we see that the Lord um, has emphasized the need of people who are lost to come and to draw nigh to him so every believer is called to participate in the advancement of the kingdom but more specifically tonight in establishing the lordship of christ across the hearts of men there is nothing as beautiful as a life that has been changed transformed you know when when how many of you have seen someone you know was not serious with god and then all of a sudden you look at that person a few years later and find out that the person is a burning and a shining light there's nothing more beautiful than a life whose values changed a life whose ideology is changed someone can come and say i love the lord with all my heart that's how some of you were you are even surprised finding yourself in the house of god loving god so passionately and pressing into the things of god some of you know where you were who you were and all sorts of stories but by his grace look what he's turned your life into now so there is a spiritual reality that must be established in the hearts of men being born again is not just an emotional thing it must come with transformation it must come with transformation when men are not transformed by the power of the word then it is not the word that saved them there must be transformation so there's a lot of faulty supposed born again many believers who claim they are born again and for many years many years yes of course i know that our growth in the spirit is progressive but at a point in your life i should be able to look at you and see your values altered the same thing you used to believe before and after no change the same way you used to live no change the same convictions the same ideology believe me you are not born again are we together now yeah. there should be progressive transformation as a sign that the seed of the word of God has been planted within your spirit and if we don't pay attention to this we will keep celebrating crowds for instance and we'll keep looking at a society that is depraved men and women who God you see that's why there are so many members in church but very little people that God can find space to move with why is it that we have millions of members congregations scattered around the world but god is still looking for people because there are very few people i'm telling you this who have experientially allowed the lordship of christ to be established in their hearts they are the ones who have given him space to find expression through their lives Before I continue, I want to ask you a very sincere question. Can you look at your life, you who was or were, 
and you who is now can you note a noticeable um, tangible transformation if you cannot find a transformation in ideology in beliefs in passion in priority you need to revisit what you have called being saved say amen, amen. praise the lord mm. all kinds of music before all kinds of music after anyhow living before anyhow living after and you say it doesn't matter no it, it matters you are not born again it's as simple as that there must be some degree of priority the passion look let me tell you something when a woman is pregnant are we together when a woman is pregnant the transformation that occurs in her is mandatory and automatic mandatory and automatic except except she has not taken in if she has taken in it will begin to alter her psychologically physiologically there will be noticeable alterations that's how it must be if the seed of the word of god has been planted in you then there should be certain things your appetites your desires your values and most importantly your priority let me tell you how you know you are really saved is that your priority about god and the things of god supersedes every other thing yeah that's what our parents told us when they got born again all of a sudden there's this song that says um when all things that surrounds me become shadow in the light of you that's what happens a new life a new life and all of a sudden you look at the things that represented your aspirations and your passions and they look like shadows compared to what you have found this is how jesus teaches about salvation that someone had a field listen and then he found a treasure the parable of the treasure he found a treasure when he saw the excellency of that treasure what did he do he went and made sure that he sold everything bought that property and remained there but what we do is we take the treasure and go somewhere else that's not salvation you are not saved what i'm saying i know that is hitting a lot of us but i am telling you sincerely it is important if you're a pastor here don't sit down and keep smiling at your congregation because they are smiling back at you make sure they are saved make sure that the people you are leading that the people you labor on day and night are saved you see that passion to see souls saved is not in many of us so you can have a roommate you can have a friend you can even have your loved one and not care there is no contribution from your part to make God a priority. No. Not saying anything, not doing anything. I cannot see any active effort on your part that you are making to turn their hearts to righteousness. Is God helping us tonight? It is part of our kingdom responsibility if we love God to be in intentionally committed listen intentionally committed not circumstantially committed if it just so happens that i find a soul that needs jesus and he says sir i want to be born again then you lead him to christ that's not evangelism that's not evangelism the same way people intentionally look for jobs because you know without that job there is no food the same way people intentionally look for husband and wife Someone comes and says, Jimmy, I'm, I'm trying to look for a life partner. You see how serious the person is? That's how serious you must also be with soul winning. See, this is not religion. There is a spirit, the spirit of the Christ that is at work in you will push you to do that. See, the gospel when truly received and the power therein will, you will be too grateful to keep quiet. Find out people in the Bible who receive things from Jesus. Even when Jesus said, don't tell anybody, they were too grateful to keep quiet. The madman at Gadara, the Bible says he went to the Decapolis and brought the people. Remember the, the, that woman who married um, six men 
and Jesus being the seventh man in her life. The Bible says she left her. She went to fetch water. But she encountered something that was superior. She left it. When God is one of many important things in your life, there's an encounter you've not had. You hear me say this all the time. Listen, listen. The God being a priority, non-negotiable priority, under no circumstance, regardless of what excuses you would have, should God at any point be second place in your life. That's what must happen to you first. You must experience it so that when you get someone born again, you know what the person should become like. When you get people born again and they do not yet have your passion, you know the job has not finished. You should draw them to a point where it eats them up. It's called the zeal of the Lord. Hallelujah. So you can stay 10 years. How many husbands whose wives are not saved and they don't care? How many wives whose husbands are not saved? How many children whose parents are not saved? Look at me. Over 90%, if not everyone, if not everyone, including myself, you look at your immediate family or your extended family, you will find people who you know are on their way to hell. It's a highway to hell. Are we together now? Yeah. I know that you hear people say this emotionally, just preaching evangelism. But I want to tell you something. I don't mean to scare you, but I want to seriously tell you there is a real place called hell. There is a real place today, like this, called hell. Are we together? The Bible says, and books were opened. Listen to me. Books were opened. And another book was opened, which was the book of life. Hear what the Bible says. Whosoever's name was not found written thereof. The Bible did say he was advised to wait somewhere. He was cast into the lake of fire that was burning with brimstone and sulfur. That's what the Bible says. The Bible says it is appointed unto man to die once. Listen carefully. It says afterwards the judgment. It didn't say after that a celebration. After it is appointed unto man. You see, in my little life and the privilege that ministry has afforded me, please listen carefully. I have had the opportunity to be at several funerals. I've had the opportunity to watch the bodies of people I knew were once alive, now dead. At that point, brothers and sisters, please look at me. Whether you have a PhD, listen please. Whether you had a first class, are we together? No matter what it is that you have had that you call your accomplishment in life. I don't care what you have done. I don't care where you have gone to. At in five minutes, not breathing, it becomes useless. Has it occurred to you? I can be standing here looking nice with my kaftan and no breath and I'm gone. This body lies lifeless. You will wake it, you will pray on it, you will prophesy on it, you will pour oil on it. The body lies down lifeless. What does that tell you? It tells you we have to focus on the things that are eternal. Listen, listen, listen. Seeing then that the relevance of the things we chase and pursue are only relevant for as long as this body is alive. So if I give somebody school fees, that's good. He's going to school. If you say you want to marry and I give you 500,000 to help you and marry, you will like me. You will be very happy. But the moment your body, this body you are seeing, can no longer host your spirit, everything becomes useless. Jesus gave us a parable that is so touching about a man, um, Lazarus and the rich man. Do you still study your Bible? 
or the job took it away there was a man who the bible says was very wealthy and there was another man who was lazarus i'm not talking of poverty and prosperity i'm talking of two people are we together now the bible tells us that the eternal destiny of that man was nothing like his life on earth brothers and sisters this is what the bible says if our hope is only in this life only in this life we are of all men most miserable have you seen them slaughter a chicken you've seen chicken one minute it has life trying to escape and you are very messless over it you put it down and in a few minutes the life is gone just like a vapor and that thing is lying down there and when you hold it two hours later you are about to eat it you look at this this was once alive now it's in your hands and you are about to eat it the same way like that chicken listen nobody may eat you but i guarantee you a time will come listen please very importantly a time will come where this mortal body will either be laid to rest or will be translated to another body it really doesn't matter which one comes as far as the glory that is coming is concerned because it makes no difference but one thing i can tell you is this there is no body no body who is not born again who has received the son who will make heaven one two there is no body who has not received who, who has rejected christ that will spend eternity with him because it's not about heaven we are still coming back to the earth but the question is so that where i am there you may be only true believers shall be right our uncles are not true believers listen our aunties are not true believers we watch them we know they are not born again our colleagues are not true believers but we do not care we do not know that it is a responsibility do you know the last time i checked which was many years ago statistically eight people die per second how many people from when koinonia started till now calculate if we are still working by that eight people and part of all those people who died some were tongue-talking christians some were pastors some were prophets are we together now they've all died no matter what you think about them see this life is brief I, i'm waking us up to focus on the things that represent priorities for the kingdom god has priorities and we must we must train ourselves to adjust in the midst of all of the blessings i'm still going to talk about a few more things but i have to press this as a foundation so winning is not a suggestion so winning kingdom advancement establishing the lordship of christ across the hearts of men it's not a suggestion it's not for pastors it's not for those who are free and don't have a job yet no take it down mike i want to sing a song don moen song when it's all been said and done there is just one thing that matters did i do my best to live for truth did i live my life for you when it's all been said and done all my treasures will mean nothing only what i've done for love's reward will stand the test of time lord your mercy is so great that you look beyond our weakness and find pure as gold in my clay turning sinners into saints and i will always sing your praise here on earth and ever after for you've shown me heaven's my true home 
When it's all been said and done You're my life Every other thing in life only becomes meaningful when your eternal destiny is secured. Did you hear what I said? Every other thing in life hear me please every other thing in life I don't care what it is is only relevant when you can guarantee that your soul is saved and then you must extend that passion to as many people as the grace of God upon your life can make happen. Every time there is a bereavement, they send me text messages. And I get a text message. Oh, apostle, so, so, so has died. And you know, the first thing that comes to my heart, most times, over 90% of the people send me a text and say, apostle, I know if you speak a word, he will come back to life. Frankly speaking, I believe in miracles. I believe in miracles. I've seen great miracles in my life and in this ministry but my concern listen my concern is not so much about bringing the person back to life listen as it is knowing that this person died in Christ you can die in money where are you going mention it you can die in education where are you going to you can die in politics. Where are you going to? Die in an aircraft. The only ones that are wise are those who live in Christ and if need be, die in Christ. It's not that you died in what? You can die in worry. It's still hell. You can die in stress. It's still hell please hear what I am saying you see people dying all the time and we keep watching them there are people today every time you think of you know right now based on the Bible except if there are other mysteries we do not yet currently know I believe that there are many supernatural things that we cannot all explain but as far as the revelation of the Bible and our understanding of it now has afforded us we know that those who did not die in Christ are lost and gone they left their houses behind listen to me they left their certificates behind I'm not saying those things are not important but they are only important listen they are only important when the major things are in place is your father born again if you hear right now look at me listen wherever your father is if you hear right now that he drops dead will you rejoice will you cry in joy or will you cry in grief if you hear that your mother has gone to be with the Lord will you rejoice will you cry in joy or cry in grief what of your roommate what of you because there are people who will never take this thing seriously. You will always come for koinonia. You will always go to churches and do a lot of things. But are you saved? It's a very serious question. That you are working for God does not mean you are saved. That you have a Christian name, Joshua, Jesus our salvation. No, 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 no. As we worship you, let all the world come and see how the mercy we receive from you can set men free. That's very important. They need to come. We need to participate in getting. This is not adding members to a church. Listen, listen. Now, this is where I have a problem. Come. When, when we go for evangelism, for most people sadly speaking we are just shopping for larger congregations now of course it should culminate into church growth but the foundation listen 
is to grant that this person has an opportunity to be turned to righteousness do you know i can get this brother saved filled with the holy spirit loving the lord and as i've gotten him saved i've gotten 200 other people saved in him are we together because this person now will take those values look how some of you a few of you that have really participated in soul winning look what has happened through your life to others i'll never forget one of our ladies years ago she might be streaming following right now and um her entire family they were not born again none of them was saved then she got born again and god granted her grace i think her younger brother also got born again and then eventually you know she kept pressing passionately and intentionally the mom now got born again it was left the father alone that man refused and said no way he will not get born again i know if you ask her what she wanted god to do in her family it's not to build a house it's not to go and build a house in the village and prove a point she just wanted everyone to be saved i remember very clearly like yesterday the day her dad was saved when her father was saved she called me crying we met around then in the campus chapel and she said look her whole family had been saved do you know when he was saved his family members had to drive to his place and they say which worry made you to give up what you were practicing and give your life to jesus if his finances we can sort it out and the man got saved under living faith so that 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 fire has come to stay the joy of salvation when we give testimonies and we say praise the lord i built a house somebody just built a house and he dashed me we stand up we roll on the ground but when we say praise the lord someone god saved we just clap a hand please go and sit down because of our priority our priority i've seen a few people that have trusted god to be saved get saved and i've been surprised at the joy the joy that filled my heart who in your life needs to be saved through you not needs to be saved who in your life needs to be saved through you there are people who the prophetic mandate is on you to bring their salvation and you're not doing anything about it I challenge every mother here and every father here after this meeting go and sit down with your children if you can especially some of the little ones don't allow this our little the moment they have gotten to an age of discretion if they can steal if they can fight they can be saved talk to them are we together now you don't allow children just leave them around a child will insult you visitors are talking is answering back that means he understands jesus you can call him and preach intelligently and let that child say when a child has not gotten to the age of discretion the salvation of the parents cover the child but the moment he gets to the age of discretion from that's why there are no children in hell because the salvation of their parents will cover them god bless you we have a threefold participation let's rush quickly Threefold participation. There are only three ways we can partner with God in soul winning and the establishment of the Lordship of Christ across the hearts of men. Only three ways. And I want to teach you now, please pay attention because it has nothing to do with whether you are a pastor. Listen, I think I should press this in. This is not the work of pastors. This is not the work of apostles and prophets and missionaries and mission agencies. This is not the work of men and women of God. This is a responsibility that is saddled on every believer. It's just that we are not taught that when you are saved, we teach people about their rights in Christ. But we never teach people about their responsibility in Christ. The only reason you have rights is for responsibilities. You cannot be taught about your right in Christ. The inheritance that you have gotten and not be taught what your kingdom responsibility is. With every privilege comes responsibility. Every privilege. There's no privilege that does not come with responsibility. If I buy you a car, 
then you start maintaining it you come to me to maintain the car i return it back because it means you are not qualified it's a privilege but i i i give you that on the strength of an understanding that you can maintain it is that true when god gives you an anointing he expects you to press to gain the character dimension to sustain it that's the responsibility that comes with that privilege If you love privileges without responsibility then you are an irresponsible person so we have a threefold participation the first dimension or the first participation the first way any one of us can participate actively in establishing the lordship of Christ across the hearts of men number one is the ministry of warfare and intercession write it down the first participation that everyone and no one has an excuse because you don't pay for prayer there's no it's not something you go and wait for an atm no the grace is there once you are alive and you are in christ the ministry of what warfare and intercession why do we have to pray so that the hearts of men will be open to receive the gospel we are going to look at a number of scriptures second corinthians 4 please verse 3 to 4 second corinthians 4 verse 3 to 4 and then you give us first corinthians chapter 6 chapter 16 verse 9 the ministry of warfare and intercession look up please we're going to read a lot of scriptures we we'll have to be very fast but if our gospel be hid it is hid to them that are what so as obvious as these truths are when somebody is not in christ it's not as easy as you think it is there is there are lots of things you can believe now because the spirit of god is in you to help you believe how you know it was the spirit of god is because you criticize this before you criticize praying in tongues you criticize a lot of things but now you have embraced it it's by the spirit it's not just by growth and maturity physically speaking if our gospel be hid it is hid to them that are lost aha uh -huh, next verse verse 4 please in whom the god of this world have blinded the minds of them which believe not are you seeing why they believe not because although they are looking at you their minds their spirits are blinded lest the light of the glorious gospel of christ who is the image of god should shine unto them so you can see that man the moment you leave koinonia he looks at you and says now what, what, what kind of thing are you put doing you sing for over over 30 minutes are you the only one I mean, can't you just sing praise and worship for 10 minutes and hurry up and go don't just insult them there is something that is making that happen when they say shout jesus or do this and you are doing and somebody's watching and say, ah, how can responsible people behave like this there is a spirit that makes spiritual things of non-effect to people who are not in christ that's what necessitates the ministry of intercession if your wife or your husband is obviously not open to the things of god don't hate them don't fight there is a spirit listen there are spirits that stand to make sure that people do not return to god in truth so you can see someone who is a smoker you will sit down and talk to him while you are talking to him the guy will say kai this will be the last cigarette and you are watching him you are even encouraged then you rub his back and say you are a good boy two weeks later you check his pocket and it's not just one you will see a packet because there is a spirit listen counseling never saves people you don't counsel people into salvation that encounter with the seed of the word of god that breaks everything because it's not physical like falling under the anointing we have little respect for it if someone falls under the anointing it has a physical manifestation and so we say wow great power was on him but when someone gets born again most times we trivialize it because we think it is not supernatural enough the ministry of warfare and intercession have you noticed 
for those of you who live with so many people who are not born again is when you pray and return from spiritual things that there are hostilities have you noticed that the moment you finish praying that's the day you will fight with your father or your mother it's not normal there are spirits they respond just like Daniel finished praying and the spirits began to move certain people in Babylon to come and put a decree so you finish praying you just rounded up three days fasting as you are rounding it up there is war all of a sudden your food becomes salty madam you are in trouble no there is a spirit look men are slaves to the spirits that control or influence them this body is a is a dumb terminal this body is only an executor of whatever spirit controls or influences it you have to know this about people so that you can learn to love people this is one of the understandings that sponsors loving people it's difficult to love people based on the way they behave you have to look beyond that you have to access an information that is more than that so if your younger brother tries to fight you and beat you and you look at him and say i will kill you you are fighting in the flesh there is a spirit no sane person will do that when a woman carries bottle and breaks the head of her husband in response to no money or anger do you think that i know she thought she was just angry look at jesus and peter get thee behind me satan ah -ah. peter looks at jesus and says me he says look peter i know you don't know but i am seen in the realm of the spirit satan came and perched at your soul and took advantage of your voice to advise me not to go to the cross and he saw it he said satan desired to sift you like wheat but i have prayed for you that your faith fail not he said and when thou art converted strengthen your brethren because he will come and do the same to them demons speak to men they don't have to be under the influence of or, 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 under under the anointing there are many people saying nonsense you know it's a spirit that is speaking there's a way you see men talk you know that's not them an interchange between them and another spirit the same way you hear a man speak and you know this is not an ordinary man speaking it is got to be a divine spirit speaking through him so you have to pray when you religiously stand up to go and win souls like that you can return with casualties you must pray challenge those spirits that's what we do in koinonia before every service the prayer department is praying i am praying we, we clear the atmosphere so when we come we have already sent an incense of prayer and once we begin to speak the word of god penetrates the hearts of people like he's doing yours now and when you make the altar call you see people coming and you are even surprised seeing those who are coming because prayer and intercession listen when the spirits that influence men and blind their minds leave you will be surprised to see how innocent and fragile those people are are we together i once ministered to a gentleman somewhere uh, while they, they used to do counseling at my place and this guy entered and he just entered and sat down and came in with the mother and the mother said this this boy I, i'm tired of him he's a terrible person he's this and that and while i was looking at him the lord opened my eyes and i'm telling you there was a spirit comfortably comfortably when i say comfortable you know that this spirit is not under pressure whatsoever and i saw that this is what makes this boy behave this way they said when this boy is angry true god is my witness even five people will not be able to hold him is that a normal human being hmm. the ministry of prayer listen before you do anything pray pray i think this is worth talking about i'm not necessarily teaching on prayer tonight but learn to pray let prayer precede your action don't sit down and assume you know what to do pray 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 before taking decisions pray before taking actions there are spirits that are antichrist everywhere the antichrist is not just a person the antichrist is a spirit that is at work now opposing the purposes of god in the lives of men pray you are going for a job interview you just say i got first class you are not praying you want to go and save someone you are not praying the moment you are going the spirit is waiting there as you are entering he will tell you see 
I tried calling you yesterday. You didn't pick. You think I'm your mate. Say, sorry, I came to talk to you about Jesus. Get, get out of here. And then when you leave, the spirit leaves and the person is back. You see people acting. You know it's not them. They may never admit it. But brothers and sisters, there is a spiritual realm. Everybody say, there is a spiritual realm that controls the happenings of everything here. Listen. It is the day you want to come for koinonia that the person who is supposed to give you money will vow and say, I will never give you money again. Why? It was not about that. It's because you are going somewhere and you will hear something that will change you. You've got to pray. People who do not pray become victims. I know we live in a time where people say it's not all about prayer. <laughs> it's about it oh. It's about it in this wicked world that we live in. You have to pray. Keep the forces of darkness where they belong. Keep the forces of darkness where they belong. You must pray. You must pray. He spake a parable to the end that men ought always, not often, to pray. So you pray. Lord, I'm coming for koinonia. I know that there are people coming with burdens and there are wicked spirits that will try to cause trouble for them on the way so that they will not get to CGC. There are all kinds of things like their phone missing, like their wallet missing so that they will stay arguing on it and not arrive there and hear the word that will change them. So we pray. We silence those spirits. And while you are, you just plan that I'm not coming for koinonia today. Say why? Say I don't have transport. Someone else wants to come to koinonia in answer to that prayer. The Holy Ghost will lead the friend to come and say, let's go. Say I'm not ready. Say I'll pay for you. You see, that's an answer. It, it looked like action in the earth, but prayer programmed it. Prayer programmed it. How many believers live their lives carelessly and we are victims the purposes of god is not advanced because many do not pray when was the last time you took a prayer request and knelt down in your prayer altar woke up in the night to pray just for intercession father increase more souls salvation don't say me i'm the shy type can't you pray men ought always to pray not to faith. Let me tell you, listen there are many of our loved ones I guarantee you, from now to December, if you will pray for them, you will be surprised what will happen they may not listen to you, but one day God will take them to one meeting where one man of God is and before you know it, the power of God will carry them in that meeting, the next thing you just hear, they will tell you I've been filled with the Holy Spirit, I'm two weeks old <laughs> praying in tongues Everybody say, I will pray. Say, I will intercede. Warfare prayers. Warfare prayers are not discussions. Listen, warfare prayers are not prayers of petition. Right? We have a teaching like that, hopefully next year on prayer, a series on prayer. There is a difference between supplication. There's a difference between petition. Warfare prayer is you taking advantage of all the tools that has been given to you in redemption. The name of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, the word of God. These are tools that are given to engage the forces of darkness and establish the victory that has been wrought in Christ over people, over territories. When we talk of warfare and intercession, that's, not the, that's one of the reasons. Listen, listen, hold on. That's one of the reasons why God gave us the prayer language of tongues. It's not just for you to feel anointed. It's a mechanism to help you engage in intense warfare. Intense warfare. Do you know, let me just digress a bit and speak to someone here. You are where you are now because you have not caused the gates of hell to give way we don't we don't it's not by physical strength this victory is wrought in the secret place one hour two hours you listen listen let me teach you how to pray you see you don't pray come david Dam. you don't pray blindly you use your mind like a like a picture to zoom the thing that you are trusting God for and you direct your prayer there 
are you getting what i'm saying the bible i will show you where this is the bible says he can do above the things that we ask or your imagination must play a role in prayer the tongues is directing it but your mind is like you keep a picture so i'm praying for my family that's what is on my mind as i'm praying in tongues i know that this tongues is not for edification of my spirit this tongues is for warfare to that end yeah that's how to pray that's how to pray fire that produces results you lock yourself off your phone that's not the time to be pinging and praying you are not serious you pray with your heart see let me tell you i believe in corporate prayer but i believe in personal prayer there are certain dimensions you will only hit when you are alone hmm. there is a way you can be praying with somebody at a point the person will be tired and he will make you feel stupid you too you will feel guilty and say oh yeah let's round of father we give you all the glory has god finished with you listen when you are praying the holy spirit is not there as a tenant is the direction of both the duration and the strategy of the prayer you don't choose how long you just want to pray you stay there till you command victory i tell you if you if that is established in the realm of the spirit you can walk out and laugh and watch all the physical nonsense and jargons that happen because they have been settled in the realm of the spirit many people do not settle things in the realm of the spirit that's why whatever comes to you physically destroys you unfortunately it's unbelievers that know how to engage this the moment you speak to somebody and say see um, you are not going to get promoted then he looks at you and says all right manager I've had you the next thing the guy said can I take one week uh, break I just want to go and say hello to my family and the person rushes immediately in the night while you are snoring your way the person is there and all his anger is in the realm of the spirit he's with the herbal is there he's bathing he's drinking he's saying whatever things doing all kinds of things then they carry your picture and do all sorts of things and the herbal is to say he's done and then all of a sudden the manager is sleeping in the night and sees a stranger walk up in his dream and say if you don't promote this guy the guy will get up in the morning and call the board meeting and say look a few developments have been happening strangely in this company and we are promoting somebody listen you who is the christian you are there angry and saying but i'm qualified and the guy is saying congratulations sir. ah you are now a great man and then he takes the title of whatever to the shrine and that's how they move forward there are people who literally live with charms as in they live with it they, it's a daily bread it's their version of prayer they know they must be in constant touch that's why you talk to them they say be careful though. you are talking to me you will die like a chicken and you too that you don't and you, and die like, and you find out that your leg is already swelling before evening you don't confront darkness carelessly until you have stamina in the spirit all this bragging we do in the body of Christ will land us in trouble will land us in big trouble jesus i know paul i know meaning there are some people that are not known can i say i must be known somebody say it can you pray in the spirit just in one minute sound an alarm to the gates of darkness no the fight is not physical the fight is not physical the fight cannot be physical it's in the realm of the spirit victories are established in the realm of the spirit the physical realm is only a, a realm where people act they act what has been finished stop confronting realities from the physical realm the job issue is spiritual the salvation issue is spiritual the stubbornness of your loved ones are spiritual stop wasting your time stop blaming people it's from the realm of the spirit that's how you command victory the ministry does not just grow by publicity it's in the realm of the spirit pray pray 
Kapata kata likatosh Enkre to kata lava kata Seke teke 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 te Reko to koto pa kata lava Mata plus kata Oh yes I am victorious Te poto shola ba 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 Every unsaved person We tear down those walls we command the forces that stop them from hearing the gospel. Every spirit that stops them from going to the house of the Lord. We command it. Hallelujah. Please sit down. 1 Corinthians 6 verse 9. Thank you, David. Quickly. 1 mm. Corinthians 16 verse 9. Look up, please. Write these scriptures. I will just talk on them quickly and then we'll move to the next one. For a great door and effectual is open up to me. What is the limitation? There are what? The person wants to come. You say he stays close to Koinonia here. His house is just close by. It looks short in the physical, but in the spirit, the distance is far. It would take prayer to shorten it. Clear those forces off. Hmm. See, let me tell you. There is a way the devil can know you. Your voice. The same way you say hello and you know somebody's voice. Yeah, you can be known. Hmm. Because you are, you are a frequent uh, in a in, in network there are those there, there are frequent programs Th those you, you step into a package for those who are always calling many of us only call when there's trouble it must become a habit you must pray you are lying down and you just roll just for waking up for that one minute the devil hears it Shikata, and then you sleep again mm. Let me tell you, when, when you are like that, you will be surprised what will happen to you. You will get up and just in a few minutes, you are just sitting down and the moment the thought of someone comes, he's not saved. That's not the time to say, oh, I think I'm missing him. No, Rika Tokaba. What is happening to him now? We secure him. Marakoto Sobada. Pray. And then you wake up with any dream that does not look like it. Oh, come on. See, I'm teaching you what I do. If I'm not doing it, you will know. You wake up with a dream that doesn't make sense as you are waking up. Eh? Before you, as you are waking up, the spirit that was sent on that errand will know that one who has understanding is there. I know it looks like I'm sounding silly. But this is how victories are commanded. So you look at men in the physical and you cannot see what they are doing physically. So you will be angry because you expect them to, to labor physically. But the labor is in the spirit. Hmm. Any church, listen, there are three departments. Now every department is important, especially in Koinonia. But hear me, I'm speaking to pastors. There are three departments in any church and any ministry. If the devil wants to destroy that ministry, there are three departments. Number one, the ministerial team. Strike the shepherd and the sheep will scatter. One, the first place of attack, of darkness, is the shepherd, the man of God, or the ministerial team. Number two, the worship team. Listen carefully. They are vested with the responsibility of creating the atmosphere for the presence of God to find expression. And the devil will do anything within his power to water down the efficacy of the presence of God. Number three, the prayer department. By the time the prayer and and for the prayer department, it doesn't. He, there there are very little things that kill prayer people. Big things don't destroy prayer people. Little things. Little things. I like this lady. Why do you like her too? And your entire robust prayer life comes under fire. Ah, pride. Little things. Are you getting blessed? Any man of God. Who has spiritual sense 
will guard these ministries in his church or his ministry personally do you know let me tell you let me teach you one secret on how by the grace of God I administrate over E and I it's like there's something God has done to my spirit it's like a rope God connected my spirit to every department all the departments in this ministry is like a rope huh the same way there is I mean it literally there is a level of course they rise and fall they move up and down but there is a level that no department must go under the moment they go under I pick it in the spirit immediately I know something is wrong either I must come and find out what is wrong or I must pray or whatever it is if the problem is from me you know for sure a retreat quick the, 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 every other thing is cancelled that's how you sustain fire you must be sensitive and discerning and prayer does that second corinthians chapter 5 second corinthians 1 verse 5 to 11 long reading quickly let me just take our time and let's read quickly we have a number of scriptures and i want us to read them one verse five okay it says for as the sufferings of christ abound in us so our consolation also abounded we are reading down quickly please down to 11 it says and whether we be afflicted it is for your consolation and salvation which is effectual in the enduring of the same sufferings which we also suffer this and that and that now listen it says hold on it says which we also suffer or whether it be comforted it is for your what and next verse and our hope of you is steadfast knowing that as ye are partakers of the suffering so shall ye also of the consolation we're reading to 11 hurry up please for we would not brethren have you ignorant of our trouble listen which came to us in asia that we were pressed out of measure above strength in so much that we despaired even of life but we had the sentence of death in ourselves that we should not trust in ourselves but in God which raised the dead. Look at what they went through. Verse 10. Who delivered us from so great a death and doth deliver in whom we trust that he will deliver us. Last verse 11. Ye also helping together. How? That's why we were victorious. Ye also, while we were going through those things in the mission field, when they were about to kill us, this is how you help. Ye also helping together by prayer for us. So it was not just that we were mighty men of God. There were times we were about facing death, but ye also helped us by prayer. Next scripture very powerful scriptures that's why i'm reading them philippians chapter 1 14 to 19 please let's hurry up oh, just give us verse 19 really our time is gone but you can write this philippians 1 14 to 19 scriptures that talk about the role of warfare and intercession verse 19 it says for i know i wish we could read from 14 it says for i know that this shall turn to my what how through your I know that the things that are happening around my life will eventually translate to salvation for me and that will happen through your prayer and the supply of the spirit of Jesus Christ next scripture Isaiah 62 verse 6 to 7 the ministry of prayer the ministry of intercession and warfare cannot be overemphasized Let's read it. Two verses. I have set watchmen upon thy walls, O Jerusalem, which shall never hold their peace day nor night. Ye that make mention of the Lord, he says, keep not silence. Next verse. And give him no rest until what happens? Until he establish, until he makes Jerusalem a place in the earth. There are men who pray Jesus to come. Anna the prophetess. There are people who pray the purposes of God to find expression. Hmm. 
let me give you two more scriptures Romans chapter 10 verse 1 and then we look at 1st Timothy 2 verse 1 to 5 quickly please Romans chapter 10 verse 1 and then 1st Timothy 2 verse 1 to 5 I'm giving you all these scriptures because I, I expect that you go back and sit down and thoroughly look at them it says brethren my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be what was the content of my prayer they might be my heart desire for my family members and my prayer to God for them is that they might be last scripture is the grand scripture first Timothy 2 verse 1 to 5 very powerful scriptures first Timothy 2 1 to 5 I exhort therefore that first of all supplications prayers intercession and giving of thanks be made for how many people for all men right for kings and for all that are in authority that we may lead a quiet and a peaceable life in all godliness and honesty three reading down to five for this is good and acceptable in the sight of our savior who will have how many who will have so why do we intercede it is in God's desire that we not only pray for our churches but we pray for territories because his desire is that all men be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth last verse for there is one God there is one mediator between God and men the man Christ Jesus he desires that that man Christ Jesus be revealed and that will happen when prayer supplication giving of thanks be made for all men that God will save them the second way you participate in establishing the Lordship of Christ across the hearts of men the second way is through the ministry of direct soul winning through the ministry of direct soul winning Matthew 9 37 to 38 let's have the following scriptures Matthew 9 37 to 38 then we'll look at 2 Timothy 4 verse 5 thank you Jesus God is helping us Matthew chapter 9 37 to 38 listen then said he to his disciples the harvest is truly what plenteous but the laborers are few next verse he says pray ye therefore that the Lord of the harvest will send forth laborers that's the second dimension to be the laborer yourself the goers the ones who will make sure that they are participating actively talking to people if it means creating a blog if it means taking advantage of the social media if it means connecting people to the resources and the ministries and the platforms that will get them saved you are the goers second timothy 4 5 second timothy 4 5 it says but watch thou in all things endure afflictions and do the work of an evangelist you are not an evangelist but do the work of an evangelist fulfill your calling do the work of an evangelist don't say I'm not an evangelist I'm not called into the fivefold ministry no it says do the work of an evangelist John chapter 3 verse 7 very instructive verse Jesus himself speaking I like you to read it it's projected one to read marvel not that I said unto you aha uh -huh, ye must be born again I make it mandatory for your eternal salvation and so there must be goers forceful write these other scriptures down we'll project only one more but I want you to write this 
Colossians chapter 2 from verse 1 to 10. The verses of emphasis is verse 5 to 8. Colossians chapter 2 from verse 1 to 10. Then give us Romans chapter 10 please. Verse 8 to 14. Romans 10, 8 to 14. Quickly please. Romans 10, 8 to 14. Thank you. But what saith it? Look up please. The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. 9, we are reading down. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thy heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Read on. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So it talks about salvation. Read what it says. For the scripture saith, whosoever believeth in him shall not be ashamed 12 for there is no difference between the jew and the greek for the same lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him so he's talking about calling upon him now then he says for whosoever shall call upon the name of the lord shall be now this is the problem 14 how then shall they call upon him whom they have not believed the people is not like they are rebellious but no one has told them no one has given them an opportunity it says how then shall they call upon him in whom they have not believed and how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard then he says how shall they hear without a preacher there's got to be somebody who will take up that laborious responsibility to take the gospel to them very quickly the third key so that we will pray the third way you participate in establishing the lordship of God's kingdom in the hearts of men is to become a kingdom financier write it down so number one we see the ministry of warfare and intercession number two you are the goer number three a kingdom financier who is that they are the men and women who supply financial resources for soul winning financial resources for the gospel anyone who loves God and is interested in participating in building his kingdom and advancing the frontiers of his kingdom in the hearts of men God is giving you what to do there are so many people who are so idle in the body of Christ and they say I've not discovered my purpose there is a mandate that is upon all of us an intercessor a goer you are a laborer and then a kingdom financier let's look at a few scriptures Luke chapter 5 please Luke chapter 5 verse 1 to 9 I found this scripture a few years ago and it blessed me I want you to pay attention pay close attention I want to share a few things that will really really bless you Luke chapter 5 is a long reading just follow me and it came to pass that as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of the Lord, he stood by the lake of Gennesaret too. And he saw two sheep standing by the lake. Take note. But the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. No miracle. No salvation. Next verse. And he entered into one of the sheep which was Simon's and prayed him that he would trust out a little from the land and he sat down and taught the people out of the sheep yes please now when he had left speaking he said unto simon that's the reward he gets now for donating his boat launch out into the deep listen please and let down your nets for a drought this is talking about fish but we are relating this to souls now okay verse six okay verse five and simon answering listen he said master we have toiled all night and have taken nothing nevertheless at your word i will let down the net we are reading down to 11 and when they had this done they enclosed a what a great multitude of fish they were now winning souls 
and the ministry was expanding beyond their capacity now souls were coming but they needed a lot of help next verse and they beckon on their and they beckon on their they would have lost those souls because now there were more souls coming and they were holding more programs and the current financial level of the ministry could not take it and instead of losing the souls they called on certain people and he says which were in the other ship they called on to them come and help us so that we do not lose the souls and he says that they should come and help them and they came and filled both ships so that they even began to sink they called on their partners their net was about to break it would have been a wasted effort because now they do not have venue for prayer those who were born again did not have a venue for prayer so they called on Rema Chapel come to us as partners and give us a venue so that we can pray lest those that are saved be lost listen there are men and women and everybody in my opinion in my opinion should participate in supplying financial resources for soul winning for God's end time agenda you know this this thing about finances every time it is said most people and, and of course I know that there are people who have um, done a lot of different kinds of things but the truth remains and hear me please that one of the responsibility I said responsibility you don't have to say we are raising offering please pastor alpha come and give ten thousand pastor femi come and give five thousand no it should be part the same way you tithe there should be a portion of your income that is designed to support the advancement of god's kingdom that is very very practiced in islam right in fact it's part of the tenants they do it very very well that whenever you are rich you know it's been it's been a teaching that they grew up with that part of that resource should be committed in the building of you know um, 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 all of the, the structures that they raise and all of that when you read Acts chapter 4 don't turn there just write it down Acts chapter 4 32 to 37 the Bible says how that the early church they had a culture the Bible says there were people who sold their lands. There are people who sold certain things and brought the resources. It said none lacked among them. There was such flow of supplies. There was such flow of benevolence because many of them knew that part of their responsibilities were to supply financial resources. Zechariah chapter 1 verse 17a. I'm giving you a few scriptures. Zechariah chapter 1 verse 17a it says cry yet saying thus saith the Lord of hosts my cities how shall they be spread abroad through prosperity shall they be spread abroad and I will yet comfort Zion and shall yet choose Jerusalem there is a place of financial supplies hear me please for the advancement of the kingdom and this is not a favor you know hold on please the way many believers the way many believers address this thing when they have a seed maybe to sow to a man of god or to a church the, the way they drag themselves and carry it and make it as if they are doing a favor do you know god is my witness i i stand before the god of heaven and i lie not if you look at my financial statement God is my witness and I say this before the God of heaven whom I serve in the spirit more than 70% of my financial resources at this current level is distributed spread to the body of Christ for the advancement of the kingdom believe me I stand before God in heaven how much money can you use for yourself how much clothes can you buy 
this is not something that I started doing now it's been there when your heart is committed towards God because where your heart is there your treasure will be also committed for kingdom advancement there are many programs I don't uh, they are not directly my business the moment I hear about it I see what I can do to support it I'll never forget early this year there was a pastor very great man of God you know nice pastor somewhere and certain things happened and they were about to jam him and the people out of the venue and God was helping them I know this is a man that loves God and fears God and he called me he said man of God we're about to get embarrassed on Sunday there is no place of worship I said over my dead body not when I'm alive at least it's within my power how much is needed for this please send me your account details let me see what I can do and that man called me and was crying together with his wife they were both crying and said the Lord will bless you see kingdom investment is one of the greatest ways to be a businessman kingdom investment believe me when I tell you when done with a pure heart and done sincerely and out of love is a jackpot in the realm of wealth forget that the result may not look like it's coming immediately my goodness you will receive answers to prayers you did not pray kingdom investment as a lifestyle not something you do when some money just comes how can i have money that someone blesses me and the kingdom never participates in it no way and it's not because of koinonia no so you don't think it's just a bias just because i'm leading a ministry not at all i consider myself to be a proper kingdom financier there are many men of god who don't give they don't even sow to the work they are doing they don't they demand for money from anybody but they never give are we together how can i sit down i'm staying in a house of 20 million and they need a carpet of 1 million in the house of god no way no way no way no way no way see i'm showing you things that you do for the sake of the kingdom that will move the heart of god to vow certain vows i learned this i learned this attitude from david biome is a man who truly truly is a is a principality territorial principality when it comes to wealth and finances his pastors are the are about the highest paid they are more paid than bankers they live in an estate this is a church but it came through giving there are many of you let me talk to you i want I'm, I'm not saying this i want to help you there are many of you when the offering basket is passing it's truly i say this not don't think i'm trying to manipulate you i fear god but let me tell you something i'll tell you why many of us never strike a chord and get the attention of god through our giving immediately after the grace you are going to eat buns outside of almost 500 naira and there are people you take 50 naira look at it squeeze it back take 20 naira oh it's the new one you squeeze it back you take out the old one and then you just say usher please come back and then you just drop it and do you know the painful part some of us are working class and you have not changed there are some amounts I cannot give God it's not pride it's the truth I will be wicked how much do I spend on eating please talk to me how much do I spend on eating if I'm wearing a watch of 10 naira and I'm giving God offering of, of 20 kobo am I stupid won't I sell the watch or carry it and drop it in an offering basket there are things you do that moves the heart of God make it a culture that kingdom investment is part of my life whether or not there is a giving program find a need create an opportunity and solve it and watch the God of heaven arise for you the third way we participate there's a man Dr. Paul Enenche gave the story one time 
I think he asked God to grant him grace. He wanted to set up, he owned different businesses, but he wanted to set up one business specifically for the funding of the gospel. And God answered his prayers and he set up the business in, in hundreds of millions. Do you know 100 percentage me? 100 percent of the profit 100 goes to the mission field that's an unkillable man i show you a man that no charm no charm can touch let me show you a scripture now we're going to pray very interesting scripture very very interesting scripture matthew 27 please matthew 27 from verse 62 we are reading down to chapter 28 verse 15 take notes please 27 verse 62 let me show you how satan wages war against the finances of believers because he understands the role of finances in advancing the kingdom ready this is the resurrection of jesus now the next day that followed the day of the preparation the chief priests and the pharisees came together unto pilate this is jesus being buried now and the chief priests and all the people who made sure he died next verse saying sir we remember that the deceiver you see the spirit of the antichrist because who is the deceiver in scripture satan now he's using a man to call jesus a name that only satan should be called the deceiver while he was yet alive said after three days i will rise again next verse command therefore that the sepulcher be made sure till the third day lest his disciples come by night and steal him away and say unto the people he is risen from the dead so that the last error shall be worse than the first next verse Pilate said unto them ye have a watch go your way and make it as sure as you can right so they went and made the sepulcher sure sealing the stone and setting a watch next chapter in the end of the sabbath as it began to down you know the first day of the week came mary magdalene and so on and so forth next verse please and behold there was a great earthquake for the angel of the lord descended from heaven and came and rolled the stone next verse we're reading down please hurry up next verse verse four for fear of him the keepers did shake those who were guarding the tomb i'm going somewhere just follow me and they became as dead verse 5 and the angel answered and said to the woman fear ye not for i know that you seek jesus which was crucified he is not here for he is risen now listen the whole fight is because of this remember they went to um, Pilate and said we do not want this statement he is risen so go and seal the place are we together now for he said come see the place where the lord lay seven and go quickly go quickly evangelize quickly are we together go and take this good news and tell people what has happened for he is risen from the dead and behold he goeth before you in galilee there shall ye see him lo i have told you verse eight now listen and they departed quickly from the sepulchre with fear and great joy and did wrong to bring his disciples word nine listen as they went to tell his disciples please follow me behold jesus met them saying all hail and they came and held him by the feet and worshiped him ten then said jesus unto them be not afraid go and tell my brethren that go to galilee and you know they should go there and they shall see me next verse please now listen when they were going behold some of the watch those who were guarding they came into the city and showed the chief priests all the things that were done they went and said ah what you are trying to avoid has happened jesus has risen next verse and when they were assembled with the elders what happened and taking counsel they gave please read it they gave they took finances and gave people to say jesus did not resurrect next verse and saying his disciples came by night and stole him away they gave them money and said go and preach that should be the message it's true we know he has resurrected but we use money 
to silence the gospel and if this come to the governor's ears we will persuade him and we will secure you you will lose your job just make sure you that anything you must do jesus is not alive we have given you the money and so they took the money and did as they were taught now listen to the, the, the dangerous statement that follows and because of the power of that money and their loyalty to it and this saying is commonly reported among the jews until today that's the role money played there are jews today that are doubting because somebody collected money how much more that you release your money and say let them hear Oh, they need a translator no problem we can pay for it there must be a translator who will speak in Hausa and we will pay for it Satan paid men to say Jesus is not alive he's paying Nollywood he's paying Hollywood he's paying the Illuminati he's paying musicians Satan is still paying men to say Jesus is not alive but there is a generation of kingdom financiers who know the purpose of wealth it's not just for buying cars and bragging and proving to people in the village they are men and women look let me tell you they will supply financial resources beyond imagination do you know when i see great ministries that i know are serving the lord in truth begging for money begging on tv if you can help us if you don't help us we'll shut out do you know how bad i feel you've heard me say it again there are television stations brothers and sisters that need only a million dollars and it will write off their budget for an annum somebody this night is about to sleep with a billionaire by six o'clock tomorrow morning whether it's saturday or whenever they are crediting one million dollars to her account she's going to enjoy it for saying jesus did not resurrect that is the prayer point of a whole ministry as anointed as they are do you know part of my goal in life is to be extremely wealthy extremely wealthy and the reason is this i already have a catalog of ministries catalog catalog of ministries per month the same way you receive salary oh this is going to destiny makers international this is going to rema this is going to this this is going to capro this is going to this this is going to this ministry and you feel the joy and the excitement and you tell the devil i am paying to make sure your head is being stamped ah listen and then satan wants to kill you the anointing on your the recipient of your money will wake him in the night he will pray his heart out for you to remain do you know let me tell you sincerely i'm a very busy person but i found out subconsciously that there are people that when they call me i pick i'm serious it's not like i'm a biased person i just found out that it seemed like i placed a lot of priority and i had to trace and i found out that they were either people who were dangerous givers to my life or the house of god whether i knew them or not it's a principle it's a principle finance God's business and watch him defend you God will stand and defend you see let me tell you anytime things are not going well in your life carry a seed and run to a house the house of God or a man of God and just go and drop it there I'm giving you a big secret you have silent I don't care what the challenge is it has died these are mysteries in the kingdom those who know how to trade the secrets of the kingdom stand through life you look let me tell you pastor you can stand you are quarter to die is all that is nonsense there are mysteries you engage in i show you one of the mysteries the house of god the house of god your money is about to finish take some of it and run to the house of god drop it there you are you are it's a covenant you are connecting the supply with the house of god I, this is what i do oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. victory belongs to jesus victory belongs to him Oh, 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 victory belongs to Jesus. Victory.
victory belongs to him. Oh, 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 victory belongs to Jesus. The greatest attack you will ever get in your life will be in your finances. Make a vow to advance the kingdom and see all hell break loose. Satan will prefer a church where the healing anointing is flowing than where finances is flowing. Because every other thing you have you cannot share is yours. Your salvation, yours. The only thing you can share is your resources. Let me tell you. I've shared the vision here but let me say it again. One time, very clear vision. I don't know how many years, maybe two, three years ago, I was praying, seriously praying in the spirit and all of a sudden my eyes were open and my ceiling just disappeared. There's a big tree just in front of my place and when I looked at it, it was no longer a tree. I saw a big, the only way I can, you know a spirit that the Bible calls Leviathan, right? That looks like a sea creature, like, um, like a dinosaur, these kinds of creatures. Now, I saw it like that. It was a huge the eyes, one of the eyes alone was like the size of my head. Two red eyes, angry. The tail was another, it was like a snake connected to it. The tail was another creature and had its own life by itself. And the creature was looking at me. I was looking at it, it was looking at me. And this is what it told me. It says, so you think you can release financial blessings for God's people, something like that. And that was it. I know these spirits they know me I've seen them that's why he will not give you the job because God already knows that you have vowed that 20% of your salary will go for the kingdom and the devil will fight to make sure you don't get the job and you say what is it about my job it's not about the job it's about the agenda that the job will support yeah that's why Satan frustrates people. That's why you enter that exam hall and then he tries to get you blank. It's not about the exam. Does Satan need your script? No. He's trying to frustrate you because he sees the destiny and sees what will be advanced there. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yeah. You make up your mind that you are going to start giving. All of a sudden you see the devil want to come up with all kinds of schemes. Listen. I preached last week's message as a word of hope for you because there is there is a rising church i guarantee you brothers and sisters not everybody is greedy again there are men who have vowed some of you here i know as you are looking at me you can give your last pin for the kingdom i know and such kinds of people there is going to be a transfer of wealth in 2007 i woke up under a very strong visionary encounter and i had four words audibly audibly massive kingdom wealth transfer the Holy Ghost spoke to me that there is coming a wealth transfer not just because preachers are saying it it's an agenda where he will make one person like a nation where people will build businesses and the profit is not for them they don't need the money it's just for the kingdom it's just for the kingdom you come and see somebody building a church and you say why are they stopping you come and look at CGC and say look look how much does it take? You hear that they are, they are putting a... There was a time Benny Hinn was looking for over... I think he spends about a million dollars per week. That's his budget. A million dollars. About 450 million naira of Nigerian currency. On crusades and souls. Are you stupid to spend that much money just on souls? No, it's worth it, brothers and sisters. It's worth it. It's worth it. For as long as I live my money will preach it's not only my mouth my body will preach my mouth will preach my finances will preach and i i don't know how many of you want to join me but i'm on a project to stamp the gate of poverty territorially territorially i say it in the open and i say it in the public it will bring a lot of criticism a lot of things will happen but it is for his glory and for his kingdom when people are organizing programs and they sit down budgeting how much one million uh, how much do you have i have 10 naira how much do you have i have 250,000. and everybody starts coercing one another big men in many churches have become the holy spirit because they are the only ones who dictate how many pastors have to depend on people the welfare of so many pastors is so terrible 
Look at their wives. That's why many of you don't want to marry men of God. When a man of God comes here, I love the anointing, but I, I don't love the state. The, the persona is very discouraging. That is changing. Say it's changing. Yeah. In the name of Jesus, it is changing. I have seen books that should be written. I have seen books that should go to territories. Do you know there are places in Nigeria that they've not had the gospel? I'm not talking of America. In Nigeria. Imagine if your finances was part. I saw a picture, I think, on, on, on the internet that touched me. A little boy was on a scale almost dying. Uh, I think some of the in the, the, the IDP camps there and the child was dying. They were barely feeding him with whatever. I, do. I don't know what that was. Dying. How much is it? How much is it? David was a man who loved God. He sat down one day and said, how can I be in a palace? And there is no house for God. He said, Lord, I know that you inhabit the heavens. You don't need a physical building. However, I cannot as a king sit down and there is no house for you. I will arise and build a house for you. God said, you have shed too much blood. I won't allow you. He said, no problem. I'm still not offended. I will gather the money. Let my son build it. There are men and women who will do that. There are men and women who will stand up and override budgets. Some of you, God will empower you by January. You come and say, how much is the budget for bus transport? From January till December. Just this is it. Just take it. See, greed. Nothing kills greed like giving in the house of God. The cure for greed is not counseling. The cure for greed is not saving. The cure for greed is not doing business. The cure for greed is doggedly pouring your resources. If you perish, you perish. I cannot tell you how many times in my life the Lord has instructed me to empty my account. Empty, zero, zero, zero. I don't mean zero, 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 home and abroad. No. What use is the money if his kingdom will not be advanced? When you see God blessing certain people, find out what they are doing. No, don't just say God is blessing them. Let me tell you, one day I was reading scripture and a revelation came. When I read the scripture, I found out that the last treasurer Jesus had was not very faithful. And I said, Lord, I suppose that there should be vacancy of treasurer. Make me one. Make me your treasurer. You know who a treasurer is? The money is not your own, but you pass it around. There will always be a portion for you, but you pass it around. A distribution channel. May God make someone hear that. Your current love for money will never give you finances. Many people think the secret to kingdom prosperity is business, investment, all of this. There is a place for that. But let me tell you, all those things are rubbish. When your heart is not, you must have a deal with God. It's a covenant. Let me show you a scripture. Psalm 122. We're rounding up. Psalm 122 verse 9. Give us an NIV please. Psalm 122 verse 9. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, victory belongs to Jesus. Psalm 122, verse 9. Are you stuck, maybe? Yeah. Okay, please just turn it so that we we'll hurry up. It says, For the sake of thy house, let me just quote it. I desire thy prosperity for the sake of thy house. Because of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek thy good. Give us an NIV. Do you have NIV? If you don't, that's all right. NIV says, I will seek your prosperity. So, Lord, I'm looking for this money not just for a name for myself. No. Brothers and sisters, how many houses can you live in? How many cars can you drive? No matter how greedy you are, this is all the stomach you have. Hmm. but the kingdom but souls if you like buy any kind of designers is finite is finite do you know what made the rich man a fool his wealth did not flow his wealth stayed keeping money and sitting on it is absolute foolishness it's a sign of fear and foolishness there is he that scattereth 
and yet increase it there is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to poverty because of the house of the lord our god i will seek your prosperity seek your good romans chapter 10 i'm rounding up now verse 14 and 15 the scripture we read earlier on romans chapter 10 how then i'm rounding up now shall they call upon him whom they have not believed so you have to pray that the forces that have blind their minds to believe be warded off and how shall they believe of whom they have not heard and how shall they hear without a preacher so you need a goer but the last dimension 15 how shall they preach except they be sponsored how shall they go except someone sends them as it is written how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things how shall the ministry be built except they be sent the gospel is free but the means to take it to the lost is very expensive brothers and sisters if i give you the running budget of koinonia per week many of you will be very surprised all of the things that happen per week alone you will not imagine but thank god for the means and the capacity please just imagine for one minute that as we are standing right now there are people outside to pay and we are stranded do you know what will happen to me as anointed as i've preached as much as you have been blessed because of the financial pressure on me i will be forced to do something else after preaching such a powerful message on souls i will now say sam please come out pastor alpha come out and now try to twist your hand because i have a budget to meet there are many men of god we call money mongers they are not money mongers the pressure of finances or ministry can make you sick so when you are blessed you are here seated there's light the sound system is working well everything after service you are going there's security standing everything is paid for you know the devil designed this system such that there's no free thing everything is paid for so that you will be limited but somebody shout the devil is a liar shout it the devil is a liar it's because of lack of finances that some of your loved ones have gotten into things you cannot believe are we together is because of there are some of you you are destined to marry a man of god god has already shown you but the day you went to go and meet your father your father said you are stupid there are business people all over his pastor you can go and bring and it's because of finances if you were blessed will he ask that kind of question if you you were blessed will you ask that kind of question brothers i prophesy to you in the name of jesus the grace that helps men to rise financially so that you can focus on more important things may it come on your life in jesus name listen it's a cause to spend your life working for money look up i want to talk to you i'm rounding up it's a cause i say it again to spend your life living from hand to mouth you will never have the time to advance the kingdom so satan make sure you have just enough most of the problems in families are money problems brothers and sisters who are talking of money with an assignment not all this money mongering thing i want to buy a car of one million dollars all that is unnecessary but that you come to a point where the only limitation in your life and ministry is the voice of the holy spirit not finances so for those of you who have been thinking every time you hear people talk of this finance no 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 please don't be carnal don't be carnal be discerning the kingdom of god has suffered more casualties as a result of lack of finances than it has as a result of demon spirit satan paid men and women our daughters are going around marrying all kinds of godless people simply because they have money there are many brothers here who are anointed 
their marriage will represent the continuity of the kingdom of God but the financial wealth without is not there they love God but they do not have the resources that they can stand with the parents and because we live in a very carnal generation everybody wants show me where is the car he came with where is the bungalow he lives in so it's corrupting the purposes of God they now go and carry one senseless person who does not have any kingdom the spiritual compass in his head is not working completely zero alignment and they join you because of money it's a cost to live for this it's a cost that the primary assignment of your life will be to chase and look for this that's an assignment God did not give you that's an assignment God did not give anyone are you hearing what I'm saying my father is alive my mother is alive by the grace of God I say it in the open I bless them all the time and every time and they are happy I've seen peace in my family not just by fasting and prayers they are all retired there's nothing for them to do they pray for me they speak over my life I've had the privilege of of helping in ways little I have seen people smile through school because of the financial resources that came I've seen people move from scratch to where God will take them being blessed for the kingdom is real blessing I don't care what you are doing I don't care how much you are making if you cannot show me how the kingdom is benefiting from it you are wasting God's time the Bible talks about the mighty man of David one who fought single-handedly threw down 800 people and a sword cleaved to his hands the Bible talked about David of the tribe of Benjamin the Bible tells us that the Benjamites Bible history tells us that the, the Benjamites were so were so fine in, in throwing slings they could diverge an arrow with a sling so it wasn't just that the anointing came upon David to kill Goliath the anointing came upon something he had are you getting what I'm saying here the Bible says that Jeroboam was a mighty man of valor and Solomon discerning that he was a mighty man of valor what did he do the Bible says in verse 28 seeing the young man that he was industrious advantageous made him ruler over all the charge of the house of Jason seeing that he was industrious he said no 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 you can't be a, a servant just like the other people you are so proficient beyond servanthood and I lift you you are the head of the house of Joseph diligence gives God room to bless you mastery shuts the mouth of critics mastery shuts the mouth of naysayers you make the prophecy of your enemies a self-fulfilling prophecy when you waste your time arguing and defending yourself rather than sharpening your sword to gain mastery hallelujah you must be proficient at your place of work in ministry in business pay the price don't run around looking for cheap success don't run around looking for quick money don't run around trying to claim what you are not I've said it and I will keep saying it till it burns into you don't try to look successful pay the price and be successful there are so many people who look successful like the fig tree that Jesus saw but when he came he found no fruit in it I've made up my mind that in my lifetime every area the Lord wants to use me I will be like a sword that has been sharpened at its finest hallelujah a man of God God wants to bless you but there is no grace no revelation no the personal contributions you go for a meeting a major conference and waste the time of the people talking nonsense and at the end of it they say uh, thank you for coming here's your honorarium may the Lord bless you and they will never invite you again never God open doors you close them by yourself let me tell you both in the church and in the secular environment the minimum standard is exceptional excellence minimum standard is God speaking to us you're a hairstylist oh God open the door for me God is saying to wear 
Make room for the blessing. Be proficient enough. Hallelujah. Please challenge yourself. Challenge yourself. There are many music ministers. You wrote a song. There is no standard to gauge the proficiency of the song. You to sing the song and hear what you wrote. Huh? And then, you see, the worst thing that can happen to you is to surround yourself with mediocres who are too ashamed to tell you the truth. You come on stage and sing and make a lot of blunders and when you step down, they say, Kai, Ken, ah, that song. And you say, really? You, you see how you are deceiving yourself? We, our standards are very small. So we, we feel a sense of satisfaction and accomplishment too fast. Because our standards are small. You're a man of God. You gauge yourself around with people who don't pray and are not serious. You lay hands on somebody and she falls down and you say emoji. Emoji compared to what? The day you go for a meeting, they bring a blind person. You pretend not to see the person. Praise the Lord. Oh, I have an apostolic. You go for a crusade, you see them. And you know the way, I love the way crusades are. They line the sick people. They are desperate. They say, man of God, there's somebody on the wheelchair here. Say, ah, did I ask you to bring the person out? Mastery. I love Jesus. Don't just think the Holy Ghost came upon him alone. The Bible says at age 12. Is that in your Bible? At age 12, Jesus sat down and began to articulate the writings of the prophets. The Pentateuch. This guy began to, he, he began to bombard the scribes and the Pharisees. What sort of boy is this? Don't waste the anointing. The anointing does not fall on nothing. The Bible makes us to understand in the building of the tabernacle, the glory of God never came until the tabernacle was built to specification. The last peg had to be put before they saw the glory of God. Hallelujah. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Excellence. Excellence in dressing. Excellence in your singing. Excellence as a student. Excellence as a worker. Excellence as a whatever it is you're doing. When people are clapping for you, if you don't run away from that place, you will soon die. Because the people who are clapping are only clapping out their frustration. Right? In a class where there are 100 students, and you write an exam, for instance, if the best student gets 11 over 100, if you do a speech and prize, who will take the first prize? It will be said he took first. Correct? But what grade did he get? Help me. So he can move around saying I'm the best student compared to what standard. Then the day you step out and meet others who are not joking. The Bible says study to show yourself approved. Kabbalah katayaba. A workman who needed not to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth. Pay attention to diligence. Pay attention to diligence. Don't stop clapping for yourself when it's not time to clap for yourself. Hallelujah. Raise the bar. Thank God you are a local champion. In your community you are the best. See the nations. If you don't make room for the nations, you will never be beyond the nations. That's why there are pastors that will never pastor more than 50 members. More than 100 members. More than 500 members. More than 1,000 members. Because the capacity, they have not made room for the blessing. Is God speaking to us please? Don't just get angry and be frowning at your boss and say this man is so wicked. This guy just got a job. In two months, he's promoted him. Proficiency. Proficiency. Closely tied to that, I spoke about laziness. Oh, by the way, Proverbs 22 verse 29 says, See thou a man diligent in his business. He gives you an assurance. He said, you will not stand before mean men. Average people. Once you are diligent 
it will defy every other barrier and make sure you meet with the kings of that sphere of influence. I've met with people that ordinary my level in life would never qualify me to see them. Not even by accident. Challenge yourself. Challenge yourself. Laziness. Proverbs 10 verse 4. Many young people in Nigeria are lazy. Lazy. Mentally lazy. Spiritually lazy. Physically lazy. We're in a hurry to show quick success. We're in a hurry to show that things are working. Life is not like that. The Lord put this in my heart to talk to us about it and I will. Proverbs. Proverbs what? 10 verse 4. Who is there? Some of you are still at Exodus. Proverbs. Proverbs after Psalms. Proverbs 10 verse 4. It says, He becometh poor that dealeth with a slack hand. But the hand of the diligent make it rich. He becometh poor that dealeth with a slack hand, a lazy person, no inertia. He becometh poor. The word poor there is not just financially poor. You become bankrupt in every area. Romans chapter 12 verse 11. I found a very good scripture for ministers. Romans 12 verse 11. Let's hurry up so we can have time. Romans 12 verse 11. Shiva la kura sibranya na manakwa. 12 verse 11. Are you there? Say amen. One to read. Not slothful in business. Fervent in spirit. Serving the Lord. He said not slothful. The word slothful there means laggy. You are, not, you are not giving life the kind of aggression it takes. Right? He said not slothful in business. Diligent, fervent, zealous in spirit. Serving the Lord. So you want to serve the Lord? You want to serve his body? You must be competent. Please hate average. Let me tell you something. As you are sitting down here, the number one thing that should happen to you this night is tell yourself the truth. I've tried, but compared to where God wants to take me, the journey is still far. It will help you to humble yourself. Whether they write Apostle Jakes, Bishop Jakes, right? It's an ugly scene to see an incompetent person boasting. It's a very ugly scenario. My goal is that we'll have the brightest of the brightest and the best of the best. The head of, the head of um, technical is here. I went to pray for his office at the bio, bio what? Biotech, that biotech place. And when I went in, I looked at his office and I looked at everything. I said, wow. It's not about size. It's about content. Are you getting what I'm saying? It's about content. At least I know that there is a project that they are on now. Projects of, of hundreds of millions. Competence. When you become competent, let me tell you brothers and sisters, all of a sudden where you are coming from will never matter. Jeroboam, the Bible says his mother was a widow. Meaning she did not have the opportunity to do much. But competence. Please, there are many of us here. It is your competence that will wipe the tears of your parents. They didn't go to school. They done their best. Don't sit down in the average there and keep forcing your mother, your father, the poor people doing their best. Rise up and change your status. Don't just sing it as a song. Is God speaking to anyone here? I read the story of Joseph so that it will minister to us because many of us are young people. Joseph was 30 years. 30 years. And as a matter of fact, out of that 30 years, about 12 to 30 of that 30 years was spent as a slave. 
What is your excuse? You are a keyboardist. You are the only one who claps for yourself when you play. And you are angry and say, oh Lord, open doors for me. You see, the, the problem is, God does not want to disgrace his name. Are you getting me? Because you are an object of praise. Everything that leaves you reveals the glory of God. It's called doxazo, a display of his glory. You must be competent. Competent. I always do this. Mike, play something. Play, just play anything on the keyboard. And um, listen. what he just played is exactly what they are crying for in many churches and they will find him and not even ask what is it nobody will ask whatever and say come we are willing to pay you huh? and you are there pay, playing the things with your fingers and say lord this church I already see my destiny no matter what you saw in your dream I guarantee you if you are not diligent you won't enter into it praise the lord you are a doctor. The first person you gave an injection had problem. Second person had problem. Third problem. Before you blame demons, we're going to, there will be deliverance here shortly. But I told you that the biggest problem of Africa is blaming demons. You can't take demons to court. You can't arrest them. We, we like the fact that they are invisible entities. We excuse our failures. Everything demons. You woke up by nine, I know it's a spirit that, that stopped me. Ha, I planned for five. What happened? You are to go for a job interview by nine. By 8.30, you are strolling around carelessly. As if it's your place. As if you are the director. You are, the CEO that will interview you was there by seven. You stroll around, you came late and said, in the name of Jesus, lift up your head. Oh, ye gates. See that? The Bible says, having the readiness to judge all disobedience, when your obedience, when your own part of the equation is complete. Say, I refuse to be average. Say it, I refuse to be average. At least I'm better than him now. You see, that's the demonic attitude that keeps people as failures. They look around and say, eh, thank God, I'm not good, but at least I'm better than this sister. Even you, you know I'm better than you. God wants to lift his body and it does not take too long but the greatest publicity is to remain in the secret place sharpen yourself become exceptional the Bible says and John remained in the wilderness until his season of appearance when John appeared with uncanny accuracy he knew that this was Jesus he said behold the lamb behold the lamb he didn't mistake in Jesus for John the beloved he didn't mistake him because he asked all the questions in the secret place. Gideon defeated the Midianites. He stayed and asked the question and made sure he was ready. Look at David. David looks at Goliath. And while others are chickening out, David comes. He ran to him. That's what competence does. It gives you confidence. When others are running away, you say, where is the challenge? They were going to hang all the magicians in the days of Daniel. The king said, by tomorrow, if you don't tell me my dream and the interpretation, just know you are dead. And Joseph said, um, I mean, Daniel said, allow me. And the Bible says in the night, the secret, then the secret was revealed unto Daniel. And when he got up, he said, oh king, this and that and that. And he was promoted instantly. Listen, brothers and sisters, contend for mastery. Contend for mastery. Those of us who are at work, contend for mastery. Don't be a liability to your place of work and expect promotion. It's not fair. Contend for mastery. 
and people will look for you. They will beg you. There are people who are paid millions of dollars to speak for one hour. Dr. Miles Munro, one of my greatest mentors, died last year. He wrote about 54 books and about 49 or so of them were bestsellers. It wasn't just because he was anointed. He consulted for government $10,000 per hour. Even if it's just to look at your face. Competence. Hallelujah. I'm a builder, I'm a builder. You build a house as if the ground is falling. Why should they invite you again? Right? They send you to go and buy something. You buy something substandard. You don't even know what is the real thing. Refuse incompetence. You trust God to take you to the area of worship. Challenge. Is this not the issue of competition? This is the issue of standing out to give God room so that you will shine like the stars. The Bible says do everything without complaining or arguing. So that you will be called blameless and pure. Children of the most high. And you will shine like the stars. As you hold forth the word of life. Be competent. Be competent. No room for laziness. Say amen. So you must gain mastery. Mastery attracts people across significant spheres of influence. Once you have mastery in an area, it will attract significant people in that area. I receive phone calls and text messages and I'm amazed at certain people who call me. They do not even know that they are the people that I have desired to see myself. And they call me. Hello, sir. How are you? Ah. I said, let me quickly humble myself. Fine, sir. I am so, 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 and so. Wow, it's my pleasure. Please, how can I see you? Whatever it is to take you, we can send a driver to come and pick you. This is urgent. Ah! Status is changing. There's no more decline. I'm on my way to better days. Prophesy to yourself. Status is changing. There's no more decline. I'm on my way. I'm on my way. Let me tell you something. Success is not what compels attention. Consistent success is what compels attention. Sooner or later, your grace will be needed. The darkness in the world is too much for you to be ignored if you pay your price. Because not everybody is ready to be competent. So when you become exceptional, forget about the criticism for now. With time, people will swallow their words and look for you. I assure you, the same boss that said over my dead body will be alive and will be the one to shake you and say we are partners in progress. By the time his company knows dives, he will find you for sure. Is God speaking to anyone here? Whatever your hand findeth to do, that's what my Bible says. He said, do it with all your might. Give it the best. Give it the best. I refuse mediocrity in my life. I refuse mediocrity. I will sharpen the sword of ministry. I will make sure I am exceptional. To deliver word in season to God's people. The sick will be healed. The body will be guided. Whatever quota I have been anointed. And have been graced. I will do my best. I'll do my best. I'll do my best. I'll do my best for you. I'll do my best, my very best. I'll do my best. So could it be that the reason why God has not announced you, listen, could it be that the reason why God has not announced you is because he does not want you to blow that opportunity? God is saying prepare. Prepare. Everybody say prepare. Say it, prepare. That's the word of the Lord for now. Prepare. Prepare. See the testimony of our brother Aaron. One side is leaving a job, another job is coming. A federal government job. 
We are going to talk about the anointing. But brothers and sisters, let us not deceive ourselves. God will judge me if I don't tell you the truth. Are you getting what I'm saying? The anointing is only active when it comes upon a refined gift. When God anoints your grace, when God anoints your ability, you become a sign and a wonder. That takes me to the next thing I'll talk about very briefly. The anointing. You are ready for the anointing among other things when you refine your gifts, when you refine your abilities, when you refine it, then you are ready for the anointing. Sharpen yourself. Sharpen yourself and then you are ready for the anointing. The fire never fell until there was a sacrifice upon the altar. The fire does not just fall. The anointing falls when you are prepared, when you are ready, then you become relevant. 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 I refuse to be relegated and I refuse you and forbid you from being relegated. Not just because you are a Christian, but because you do not have what to offer. Hallelujah. My younger brother, very brilliant gentleman. When he graduated, a job was not forthcoming and I looked at him. I told him, young man, just keep sharpening your ability. You are too gifted to be ignored. It's a matter of time. Praise the Lord. For one year, that guy, very intelligent young man, but he committed his best. He gave his all. He was very, very serious. He was getting a job that they were paying him 5000 I told him, no problem. Stay there. Just be serious. He became exceptional. If he did not come for work, they would know. And all of a sudden, it was like a dream. He was called to become a lecturer in University of Joss. He's a lecturer right now. No devil stopped it. No devil stopped it. Everybody say competence. When they called him and he spoke to them, they knew this was a bright material. If you are called, if the kings that are to lift you call on you right now, will you enter the palace and go back to the prison? Or will you enter the palace and shut the door of the prison forever? Are you hearing what I'm saying? Oh God, connect me to that person. Connect me to that ministry. Give me an opportunity to preach in that bigger platform. And God is saying, are you prepared? As far as I'm concerned, I'm willing to bless you. But have you done your work? Are you prepared? I vowed a vow in my life. I will never enter the presence of greatness and go back to my old level. If I step into any atmosphere of greatness, I am prepared in season and out of season. Praise the Lord. When your preparation is complete, then you are ready for the anointing. Acts chapter 10 verse 38. The Bible says how God anointed that Jesus Christ after he spent time learning the, the, the Pentateuch and prepared himself getting an exact blueprint of his assignment the bible says how god anointed jesus of nazareth with the holy ghost and with power and then together his diligence and the anointing of the holy spirit the bible says he went about doing good became invincible and healing all that were oppressed of the devil he said, I have found David, my servant, Psalm 89, verse 20, downwards. And with my holy oil have I anointed him. I had to find him. I found David since, but he had not done his work. Now I have found my servant. And with my holy oil, I have anointed him. Hallelujah. A man in the construction of the tabernacle, the architect of that construction, he was called Bezalel. The Bible says he was a man who was gifted in craftsmanship. And the anointing of the spirit came. Look, let me tell you, when God anoints your grace, he will command men to hear you. And no, even if you are living in a cave, you become a city that is set on a hill that cannot, cannot. You spend your time praying and studying the word and opening up yourself and making yourself available. Then 
that unction will come upon you. It comes in a heavy way that nobody will deny the hand of God upon your life. Are you getting what I'm saying? It's a powerful thing to see someone who has done his assignment and is carrying the unction of the spirit. He becomes undeniable. Invincible. No matter what you say about that person, the world is too dark for the, that grace to be ignored. I show you a key. God wants you great. God wants you blessed. For many of us in this miracle service, this is the key to the next dimension. I don't just want us to say it is it's raining, raining, let it rain and so on and so forth. No. Hallelujah. Grace. And I salute so many people who left various places to come tonight because it is part of your, play your own part. And tonight, grace will come upon you and it will distinguish you. Like Saul, you will go back and they will say, ah, ah is Saul also one of the prophets? When did you enter this dimension? Favor is when preparation meets opportunity. It's not magical. It's a formula. And God is calling us. Wipe the tears of your family. Forget about the challenges of now. That's why we are here. To address it. But above and beyond that, you must make up your mind, brothers and sisters, that something must be different about my life. Make up your mind that by next month's miracle service, I'm coming a new person. I'm coming a better person. Your phone that used to be on silent, by March, calls are coming every day. You wake up with calls and text messages. Men are, are placing demands on the grace, willing to pay any amount, job or no job. There are people who are not working, but they are getting the salary of CEOs because people will pay for your gift. Let me tell you, it says buy the truth. God put a price tag on the truth. And if you have the truth, men will buy the truth. They will pay you. And they will call it a privilege. Is God speaking to someone here? And don't say, I didn't go to school. Or I didn't have the opportunity. I cannot speak English. No, no, no. None of those things. Master whatever God has given you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? master whatever he has given you and tonight an anointing comes on it and i send you like the foxes of samson and you will step in and begin to do wonders the pride of every true leader is not that he becomes a superstar i've said it again and again that true leadership the hallmark of leadership is that you are able to influence followers to also become leaders not maintain followers Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Shortly before we rise, I want you to pray as you are seated. You know the area in your life God has been wanting to bless you. But the truth is your incompetence has limited him. Inside and outside, no matter how far, lift your voice and talk to your maker. And say, Lord, I'm sorry. This music ministry... Hallelujah. Go ahead and pray. Competence. Exceptional competence. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, I'm tired of being a mediocre. I'm tired of my life looking as if you are not mighty. I'm tired of joining the crowd in mediocrity. In this season of the rain, I'm challenging myself. Come on, pray, young and old. It's time for a new season. I arise and I shine for my light is come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon me. Gentiles come to my light and their kings to the brightness of my rising. Never will I be termed forgotten. But I will be called Pula. Pula. The land of delight. I reject mediocrity in business. Mediocrity in ministry. As a student, I reject mediocrity. I challenge laziness. Pray. As a worker, I am the best staff. I am an envoy. Pray. I break ordinary standards. I refuse mediocrity. Pray. 
As a minister of the gospel, I contend for grace. I stop joining the crowd in mediocrity. Go ahead and pray. As a businessman, I become exceptional. 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 I'm an ambassador. I represent the parliament of heaven. And I represent God at the highest level of excellence. Pray, Koinonia. As you cry upon him, he grants you grace. Lord, you want to change our stories in this season. We make room. We make room. We make room. We make room. We reject the spirit of laziness. Time and chance happen to them all. Opportunity and seasons come to them all. Hallelujah. Rise up on your feet. Let's pray this prayer point. You're going to ask God for grace. Mention the areas where you need God to grant you grace to be competent. There are books you will need to buy. There are seminars you will need to attend. There are mentors you will need to find. Whatever it will take to be like an axe that has been sharpened. Go ahead and pray. I receive that grace. Grace for competence exceptional competence don't let any man preach you against competence incompetence will make you poor incompetence will make you angry incompetence will make you a failure incompetence will make you average I must stand out. I must stand out. In my generation, I must stand out. Because thou hast loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Listen, I'd like you to pray pray for grace to be outstanding lift your voice grace to be outstanding forget about the pain of today the bible says for our light afflictions which is what for a moment walketh in us a far more exceeding weight of glory pray while we look not at the things that are seen but the things that are unseen for the things that are seen are temporal subject to change the closed door is subject to change. When you are competent, nations will celebrate you. Without bias, they will celebrate you. They will demand your grace. They will pay for it. Praise the Lord. So I want you to have this at the back of your mind today. Go back and buy the books you need to buy. Go and sell those shoes and buy books. Are you getting it? He said, I, Daniel, understood by books. Stop living a fake life. Go and pack those materials. Sell them and buy what will give you relevance. The Bible speaks about the prophet Samuel. He said the word of the Lord did not fall in his mouth. Be exceptional. Be exceptional. Be exceptional. Don't applaud yourself when you don't have to. Be competent and the world will applaud you. And you will not be ashamed of it. You will not be ashamed to stand before the platforms he gives you. 
because you know that you have you have done your assignment you will always be ashamed you will always envy successful people you will always hate them when you remain a mediocre but when you rise, you become colleagues in progress. You become partners in progress. You celebrate them because you have become colleagues. Hallelujah. Now to the business of the night. I want us to pray. The Lord is going to do a quick walk in this place. There are mighty healings and deliverances. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Lift your voice and pray and say, Lord, my time for a visitation has come. Pray from the depth of your heart. Inside and outside. No matter how far you are, pray. insist that you must be touched this night insist that something must change it doesn't take time it just takes one encounter you came with a lot of challenges don't sit down and waste your time make sure you cry unto God tell the Lord exactly what you want tonight go ahead please speak to the Lord especially for those standing outside make sure you talk to him I feel the wind of your spirit now the heartbeat of heaven let us hear we see the rain of your love we feel the wind of your spirit now the heartbeat of heaven let us hear so let it rain let it rain. Would you open the floodgates of heaven? Let it rain. Let it rain. Open the floodgates of heaven. hallelujah hallelujah listen i don't care what the issue is let your faith rise right now are you hearing what i'm saying i see sick people all around inside and outside and i see all kinds of people but i want you to know tonight that the god of wonders is still in this place so let hope rise Darkness trembles in your holy light. Your hands, everyone. Hallelujah. Listen. Tonight there is an unusual anointing upon me. I began to sense this right from home.
there will be massive deliverance right now massive deliverance there are people who have come there are families that have come from far and near hallelujah and every challenge every power of darkness my bible says every tree that has not been planted by my father please lift your hands inside and outside participate listen we are going to shout that name please don't you think it's just a chorus or it's a formula there is an anointing with it because it's a name that is above every other name hallelujah you're going to shout that name at the count of three as you shout that name there will be all kinds of deliverances many of you you are standing in not just for yourself but for your family members all kinds of spirits and spells attempting to bring back what Jesus died for in the name of Jesus I speak to the realm of the spirit and I declare in the mighty name of Jesus that every foul devil every covenant every spell at the count of three let the fire of God separate those people right now one two three those devils I command those forces in the name of Jesus I cast out those devils bring them out the fire is falling on witchcraft outside the fire is falling every power that is not of God I send the rod of judgment every power that is not of God everyone standing upon this ground I come with an apostolic anointing in the name of Jesus Satan let God's people go there's no hiding place for the power of God is everywhere there is no hiding place not for witchcraft there is no hiding place I command judgment let the angels of the living God move across this congregation and break chains hallelujah I see a lot of chains lift your hands again I see chains so many chains break chains break break chains break listen some of you this chains has lasted for years and decades i don't care how long it has been as you shout that name again i see many people outside you will know the chain has broken that embargo over your family you will know it when it happens because I hear sounds of change at the count of three shout that name again with all your might and I command that as they shout may those chains break one two three chains of stagnation chains. Break it, 
from every chain. I break trees, chains of sickness, chains of poverty, chains of chains of stagnation. By the blood of Jesus, I break free. By the blood of Jesus, hear me, listen, listen. I guarantee you, not one person standing on this ground will go back with the chains holding you. I'm speaking to the powers. They know the voice of God. This is the season of the rain. This is the season of the rain. And in the name of Jesus, now over families, any family under the sound of my voice, you have suffered mysteriously. I come in the name of the Lord whose I am and I command judgment upon the powers of darkness judgment upon the powers of darkness right families shake it take it take it shake it take 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 it Hallelujah. For this purpose was the Son of God made manifest that he may destroy, put to an end, annihilate. It says, Son of man, what seest thou? Zechariah 1:18. It says, Four horns. These are the horns that have lifted up themselves against Judah against Israel and against Jerusalem so that no man will lift up his head he said but I have sent four carpenters and they will terrorize those horns we have come tonight to terrorize the power of darkness they must let you go after nine plagues Pharaoh refused to let them go he said yet will I send one more plague upon Pharaoh and Egypt and after that he will let you go Jesus paid the price in full completely. There is no reason why the devil should tie you down. When he was on the cross, he said it is finished. And we are here to enforce that which, that fatigue. In the name of Jesus, for those in front here, they represent families. I don't care what kinds of spirits or entities. At the count of three, you will let God's people go and release their families no matter how long the blood of Jesus annihilates the legal hold you have I don't care what covenants you have in the name of Jesus therefore I speak to every foul spirit that at the count of three you let them go never to return right now in the name of Jesus one two three go 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 out you go out you go out you go never to return out you go by the ministry of the blood by the ministry of the blood I cause you by the ministry of the blood release the families release their finances release their destinies go now go now I compel you by the blood of Jesus that blood opens the gates of captivity that blood opens that gate in the name of Jesus hallelujah hallelujah I declare every family under bondage free I don't care how long the doors have been closed we open it now you will begin to experience unlimited breakthroughs. 
Hallelujah. Who is Stephanie? Stephanie. I hear a name Stephanie. You are wearing a like orange veil. Do we have somebody like that? Is it an orange veil or something? Stephanie. Yeah. Bring that woman. That lady or that woman, whoever. Just let them win. Okay, young lady. This is the spirit of death. Bring her. Lay hands on her stomach. I curse that spirit. Every spirit of infirmity. Out! Now! Leave her alone. She will rise up completely healed. Stephanie, Stephanie. I see here the name. Hallelujah. I'm seeing a family in a vision. We have to hurry up. We really want to finish first. So I'm seeing a family. There is a family that came here. I'm seeing four people. Like, is it four children or something? A family. Do we have someone like that? Please, if, if it's yours. If it's your case or it looks like your own, just signify and let us know if there is none, we can move forward. Because this is what the Lord is showing me. I'm seeing a family. It's like four children. They are here. They came here. Shut up. Is it you? You are the one. Where are the people? Where are your children? Come. Why are you sitting back? Come. there is a call of God upon the family not just your mother but upon the family and it's a prophetic call it's a prophetic call right it's not only your mother I didn't I'm, I'm, I don't know you people but the hand of God is going to come upon you it's a mighty anointing of the spirit it will come upon you are you part of the family huh you are related. You are what? You are on your own. Okay, please, until I call you, but come. Come and stand since you have come. For the Lord is going to bring restoration. This is the first thing that will happen. Mark it. Restoration. Number two. What do you do? the Lord is going to lift you why am I seeing a ring in your hand I'm not seeing a physical ring but it's in the spirit I'm seeing a ring your wedding bells are ringing are you married huh this is what I'm <laughs> we don't feel embarrassed we're a family marriage is not a bad thing Abi mommy is it a bad thing it's not a bad thing because there is nobody and you are wondering, this is what you are thinking in your heart. Where is the person? Listen. He said, we see the fire. We see the fire. We see the wood. Where is the lamb? And he said, Jehovah Jireh. The same word that comes. Listen. Listen, my dear. You don't know me. I'm not a herbalist. Are you getting my point? When the Lord brings a word, it will make it happen. My brother. This year you will hold finances that will make you afraid. Come, what do you do? What does what what do you do? Huh? That's not it at all. This, this one is just for generosity, just to prepare you. God is going to open a strange opportunity for you. Do you believe what I'm saying? It's a strange opportunity. If you people have ever doubted whether the hand of God is upon your mother, I'm telling you, she's not fake. I'm saying it now because they have been talking about this woman she sees and people have been saying she's fake I'm saying if this woman is fake she will not enter this place I guarantee you except I'm not a man of God please she's not fake what she needs is is the, an, an accurate alignment to the word of God so that her prophetic vistas will be sharpened 
She has a lot of prophetic insight, but the word level is very low. So there is dwindling. That stability in the spirit is not there. That's all. This mama is not fake. Because I'm seeing her walking in a prophetic and a healing anointing very powerfully. Come, madam, come. You have taken all the glory. You have taken. Hold hands, both of you. Mm. I show you a mystery. Madila katabarata. Jembra mato zatali kaparando skolapaya. Mambro no supaya. One will chase a thousand, but two will chase ten thousand. Confirm your word right now, oh God, as I speak. There is a transference of graces right now happening between both of you. It's a drinking together. It's a happy anointing that is coming because you will also step into a strong evangelical and prophetic anointing. Drink of that wine right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Don't be afraid to help her. You won't be with her forever. But the Lord is going to lift you in due season. And you will begin to see in a strange way. May the Lord bless you. May he anoint you in the name of Jesus Christ. I break the embargo of darkness over the family. Come. You're a great lady, but the devil wants to oppress your life. Hold my hands. Just hold my hands. Mm, for he is here. Light shines in the darkness. You must release her. Let her go now. I'm seeing an old woman's face. But in the name of Jesus, I declare, you step into strange dimensions of grace. I command deliverance to you right now. In the name of Jesus. God bless you. It's all right. I bless this family. The Lord changes your story. You will return with dramatic testimonies. In Jesus' name. Newi. I'm hearing a name of a place. There is, there's. Newi. I know it's an Igbo place, right? There is, there is a, there is somebody. I, I think a lady or a guy or somebody from that place. Newi. Who is that? Please, if it's your case, whether you are outside, just make your way so that you don't waste our time. Please, there are so many other people. Come, mama. She's your mother. What's wrong with her? Is this working? Please help us. She's having problem with her legs. She's having problem with her legs. knee problems. Her legs. Oh. Her legs. Her Arthritis. You don't know. Yeah. You I love God. Sleep. Yes. Very well. Very well. Yeah? Very well. Well enough to marry a man of God. Yes. Because that's your husband. He's a man of God. Thank you, dear. I don't know how, madam. See mommy laughing. <laughs> mommy, come. What is wrong with her leg, please? Let's let's not. Where it has been disturbing her for some time now. Up to two years now. I feel a swoon in my waist by my left leg. Fish ground. I used to feel serious pain. Don't 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 cry. It's okay. Mama, look at me. You came here because you believe in Jesus. Yes. Look at me. Just look at me. Say, Jesus. Jesus. Thank you for healing. Thank you for healing. I receive healing. I receive healing. Pain. Pain. Go. Go. Now. Now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Mama, you believe Jesus. I believe Jesus. Run up here. Come. Just come. Forget about the legs. Come. Go ahead. Do what you couldn't do. Look. Praise the Lord. I came to this program today. I'm no more feeling the pain. I even I went Check. to hospital today. My Come on, give it Praise the Lord. To break every chain. Break every chain. Praise God. Where are you from? Cross River. Huh? Cross River. You are serious about your love for God, right? Yes. Because you are going to marry a man of God. Yes, I am. You, are, you know it now. Yes. What I'm saying, you have known it. I'm just confirming to you. Thank you, Jesus. 
Is it a lie? They just say I'm lying. Thank you, Jesus. Ladies know a lot of things, they just hide it. I'm not endorsing your dream and your vision. No, I don't know what you saw. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Not only that, truly, truly, the grace and the spirit upon your mother is upon you because your mother is a good woman. Mama, tell me one thing you want God to do in your family. I want my children to serve God. I want all of them to serve God. Father, stretch your hands towards this family, everybody. What a request. Not for money. Many of you will ask for money. I will give me money sharp, sharp. In the name of Jesus, you are the son. Where are the rest? You are the only one. Just two of you. Yes, and I have since graduate. I thank God for what God has been doing in my life. I thank God. Praise the Lord. Stretch your hands and pray for this family. 11 children. In the name of Jesus Christ, they will serve the Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, they will serve the Lord. I bless this family. Let doors of prosperity be open. Let doors of advancement be open. In the name of Jesus. God bless you. Celebrate Jesus for Mama's miracle. Rejoice with them and you will have your own testimony. Hallelujah. Who brought this person? Help us now. Where are the people? Huh? I'm the one. It's okay, Mama. Relax. What is the situation? What is it? He can't walk. Yes, he problem is slow. What happened to him? It's okay. okay. What happened to him? Look at me. How are you? Can you talk? Okay, let me talk. What happened to you? Uh, I felt sick last year October when they took me to the hospital. So many examinations. And they say it's cancer. And when they refer me to Shika here. They said you have cancer. Yes. Sir. So right now you have cancer. Yes, so they've the, left you to the, die. Yes, sir. Cut off of your legs. Yes, sir. I cannot even walk, sir. You can eh? I can't walk, sir. Since when? Since when did he stop walking? Last month. You believe that the power of God is going to set you free? Yes, sir. My brother, look at me. Jesus is able to heal you. You believe that? You have taken all the praise. You have taken all the glory. You have taken all the There is a spirit. I curse that spirit right now. I curse that spirit. Right now, you feel fire going through your body. I curse that spirit. Upon these legs. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I release the power of God. I command that spirit. Leave him right now. Move your legs. Start moving your legs. Try to move it. In the name of Jesus Christ. Are you feeling the legs? Do you feel the legs? Now I release strength to these legs. Right now. I release strength to these legs. In the name of Jesus. I release strength to these legs. Right now. Exercise the legs and let him start moving it. Go ahead. The cry in your family comes to an end. By the power of the Holy Spirit. The Lord visits you and brings to an end. He brings to an end in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Please call this mama, this madam. Come, he will answer you. Come. Massage his leg. I will tell you when to pick him up. He's visiting you in a strange way. Bringing breakthroughs to you. Refining the fire and causing the hand of wickedness over your family. That embargo is lifted over your family. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Come, ma. Don't worry. God is touching everybody. Just connect to what he's doing. Mommy, look at me. 
Please don't cry. Look at me. Just look at me. I want you to know that the captivity in your family has come to an end. I know you are crying. Don't worry about it. Believe me. Look at me. Where is your husband? He's not here. No come. Is that all there is to the story? When I left house, he never come back from work. I need to pray because your marriage is shaking. You need the grace of God. Father, in the name of Jesus, Mama, don't cry. God is bringing you restoration. That's what I hear in my spirit. And I command and I prophesy restoration in the name of Jesus Christ. I cause that force of darkness right now in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm looking at an angel walking through this road. This is what I'm looking at an angel. The Lord wants me to talk to somebody. That person will come under the power of God right now. When that happens, please let me have that person. You have taken all the voices. You have taken all lamentations. You have taken all the praise. You have made let me yours. Please bring out. I give you, I give you, I give you the highest praise. A fire that ignites you and sets you free. I command in the name of Jesus that influence of darkness leaves you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now, please. All those who came here specifically for healing miracles, find your way to the front right now. Worship team, give us a powerful session of worship as we pray. Please, don't make it rowdy, inside and outside. Aside from the, the family that I minister to, if you came with a sick person, please come and line up here quickly. Let's save time. Expect the power of God to touch you. Please. You see what the Lord is doing. And all of us who are standing, if there is a loved one or somebody you know, as you are standing, connect to them. Please, don't lose connection with this service. Some of you can take steps of faith. God is already touching people. Don't lose connection. No matter how many we are here to minister to you. It will be a quick walk. Pastor Jexa, it's going to be a very quick walk because of time. There are still some other things God wants to do. Especially the prophetic aspect of this meeting. There is a guy outside. The power of God is going to hit him in a mighty way. God is bringing restoration in his life. A gentleman, it will be like a tornado. It will be a mighty encounter. Now listen. All of you standing. I want you to know that Jesus heals. The price for your complete healing has been paid. I know that there are HIV people standing here. There are people with all kinds of medical reports. I guarantee you the price has been paid. And so as we pray. Everyone I'd like you to connect. Because some of you shortly. You will be receiving strong impartations of the healing anointing. So you must focus. Don't be distracted. Don't be distracted. Hallelujah. Elijah said if you can see me. Don't, don't be distracted. Please. Hallelujah. Please pass your request. Ushers, let's hurry up please. Get them to the aisle. Just pass it to the last person. The last person by the side. Please help the ushers inside and outside. It's not a ritual. There is a strange mystery of answered prayers in this place. Please. Begin to pray in tongues as you do that, please. Everywhere. Begin to pray in tongues. All those connecting with us online, it's time for them to connect now so that we can...
Sheka parada mosoto balada balada Hallelujah We're not trying to build doctrines out of No, no, I'm I'm one person that fights tradition Especially where the spirit of God is not there But this was an instruction God gave According to what Hezekiah did Hezekiah carried the threat letter and brought it to the altar and laid it there before God. Hallelujah. Please, very quickly, inside and outside. If others sent it to you by text and you've not copied it out, just you can just keep it and connect by faith. Unto you that answers prayer shall all flesh come. Lord Jesus, we come before you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. These are the requests of your people. The Bible says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything. It says, with prayer and supplication, prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, make your request known unto God. Make it known. Don't hide it. Make it known. Begin to talk to the Lord about what is on the altar here right now. Please pray. Hearing is our Father glorified when you bear much fruit. Some of you, the request you wrote here, only God can grant it. That's why we don't read it. We just pray. Because probably if some of us see what you've written here, our faith level may not be able to take it. Please make sure everybody's request gets here. No matter how long. Let's do it very quickly. I have seen... God do strange things strange things in the lives of people we have seen all kinds of dramatic miracles please I want you to know the person you are praying to I want you to know that it's not to Joshua Selman it's not to an idol you are not praying to the president of this nation the king of kings is there anything too hard for me to do I am that I am. Yeah. Is there anything so hard for me to do? I am. I am Hallelujah. Myself and Pastor Jakes will be praying passionately on this request. I want you to believe that as we make contact with your request, I tell you the angels. There are some of you, as we are praying on it, instantly, you will begin to get answers. In one minute, everybody begin to blast in tongues as we pray. Hey. Shapra Pakata Baladaba Rakata Roto Shopregeri Baladaba Father, hear the prayers of your people in the name of the Lord Jesus. Let there be all kinds, all kinds of miracles. I agree with my brother, all kinds of miracles. Supernatural jobs, supernatural lifting in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Unto you that answer prayer will all flesh come. Lord, we ask you, blessed Lord, 
Let every cry, every need, Lord, every pain. Lord, let things that look impossible by men. We pray for a change in the name of Jesus. We ask for the hand of God to come mighty, Lord, upon families. Let there be testimonies, Lord, unfolding testimonies. We pray for the hand of God, Lord, to open doors that have been closed. Hear that, though. We ask for your mighty miracles, breakthroughs, Lord. The blessings of God that make it rich and added no sorrow. Father, we pray for jobs, amazing, blessed jobs, Lord. Miracles, miracles, Lord. Healings of families, Lord. We pray that, Lord, contracts that have been overdue, Lord, we pray for sudden calls. Calls, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray, Lord, the tears of your people, Lord. The needs of your people. In the name of Jesus, we command that angels responsible for bringing answers to these prayers be released right now in the name of Jesus. Let the heavens be open over your people in the blessed name of Jesus. My Father, as we lay these prayer points before you, Lord, we ask in the name of Jesus. We ask that doors be opened. Let greatness arise in your people in the blessed name of Jesus. Thank you because God, as we ask in the name of Jesus, we know you answer in the blessed name of Jesus we pray. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Please rise up, everybody. There is a heavy anointing in this place. Just a few minutes and we'll be done. Hallelujah. I believe in the power of prophecy. I may not be able to call everybody one by one, but the word of God, Kabbalataya, he said it's the discerner of the thoughts and the intents. No matter where you are, one word of prophecy can tear open whatever limitation. Please, I want you to believe. Everything you see us do in this miracle service is as instructed. There is no room for entertainment. We fear God and will not gather you to waste your time. Hallelujah. The Bible says, believe in the Lord and you shall be established. He said, believe in his prophets and you shall prosper. Lift your hands. As your level changes, lift your hands. Something will happen to you. I want you to receive as I pray shout amen from the depth of your heart amen means let it be so it's an act of faith hallelujah I bring to an end the era of mourning in your life and your family I say it again the era of mourning by prophecy let morning end in your life and in your family. Hallelujah. Hear me. Every embargo that has stood on the way to your next level. By the weapon of the prophetic. In the name of the Lord Jesus. I command those limitations broken. Human limitations, demonic limitations, I command them broken now. I command them broken now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I declare every dimension you should have entered by now that you have not entered by the mystery of restoration. Makoto tekete, skeparata telekotopai. In the name of Jesus, between now and the next miracle service, step into those dimensions. I prophesy to you, step into those dimensions. I prophesy to you, step into those dimensions. Step into those dimensions. Step into those dimensions. Hallelujah. I pray for every student here. Listen. This proverb will no longer be used in your life. Listen. That proverb that makes God look as if he's not alive in your academics. 
in the name that is above all names we send angels to every department of every campus represented here we send angels to every faculty may they tear down may they uproot every trace of wickedness may they tear down may they uproot in the name of jesus let missing scripts be found let students that have been victimized be restored in the name of jesus hallelujah for god has not given us the spirit of fear there are many people you want to take steps but fear is keeping you down in the name of jesus the bible says and to deliver them who through the fear of death have all their lifetime be subject to bondage i cause fear from your life now i cause fear from your life now i cause fear i cause fear in the name of jesus hallelujah i pray for you there are many who have been praying lord reveal to me the purpose of my existence there are people who have been crying i don't want to waste my time in destiny i pray for you that through a night vision mysterious prophetic encounters may your exact assignment be revealed in the name of jesus christ there are people praying right now all you are you have come here for is the direction for the next level you just came to get direction i prophesy to you the bible says and ye shall hear a voice from behind saying this is the way i command between now and next week let there be accurate direction accurate direction in the name of jesus i pray for you there are people here whenever they want to favor you people change their minds for reasons you do not understand i pray in the name of jesus that every planting that is not of god that is making your helpers reject you in the name of the lord jesus i command them broken now i command them broken now hallelujah by the power of prophecy i connect you to the men that need to help you and lift you to your next dimension please take seriously what i'm saying in the name of jesus i connect you i connect you business helpers ministry helpers academic helpers marital helpers receive the ministry in the name of jesus prophecy is like rain your job is to receive it once you receive it it starts acting immediately in your life hallelujah i pray in the name of jesus christ over your health that spirit that keeps bringing recurrent health conditions the price has been paid and therefore by the blood i break you free from any covenant of infirmity i break you free from i command everyone under any spirit of infirmity that is recurrent may you be free once and forever hallelujah i challenge embargo of hardship over people and families there are families that love god but it's like hardship will never leave them in the name of jesus we stand tonight in this place and we challenge the root of hardship by next miracle service return with breakthrough testimonies 
return with breakthrough testimonies you may not know how it will happen but may my god go before you and shock you hallelujah i pray for your finances in the name of jesus there are many who are giving you are tithing you are faithful but it just looks like when things are about to happen there are limitations in the name of the lord jesus i declare that beginning from next month i invoke the mystery of divine supply the same way hear me the same way a raven the bible does not tell us where it came from but it brought bread for the prophet i command mysteriously may your gates be open now to receive the forces of the gentiles i pray for everyone called dull in this place you understand but something happens to your mind that 10 times better anointing that distinguishes people receive it in the name of jesus I sense an anointing one more time I pray that prayer whatever stops you from understanding the Bible says and he opened their understanding that they might understand the scriptures I pray for you may understanding be granted unto you hallelujah favor the one factor that separates men that favor in a heavy dimension may it mantle you from now may favor mantle you from now in the name of jesus financial favor marital favor academic favor favor in your job favor in ministry hallelujah everyone who is confused about life any aspect of life i bring that confusion to an end now i pray for all those who came here specifically trusting god for the fruit of the womb in fact i pray for you listen not just physical barrenness any area of your life this is the year of the rain and when rain falls, barrenness stops. Therefore, I command, be fruitful in the name of Jesus. Fruitful, multiply, replenish, subdue, and have dominion in the name of Jesus. I command everything called dead in your life and your family. I don't care for how long it has died. Your health your business your life in the name of the lord jesus i command resurrection right now in the name of jesus christ i pray for you there are people who desire god you desire an encounter that's what you need you desire an encounter i pray for you may the angel of the lord's presence visit you you may not understand what I'm saying. May the angel of the Lord's presence visit you. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for your gift. Your ability. Your skill. Whatever you are using that brings bread. Help her please. I pray for you. The works of your hands because you are determined to be diligent you will see the testimonies that will come from this prayer i put an anointing on your skill i put an anointing i put an anointing on your ability i put an anointing on your gift on your work on your skill may it begin to produce in a supernatural dimension
Hallelujah. Now lift your hands. I just want to do an impartation. There are people who have come from different places. Please be sensitive. We are out of time. We will soon round up. But it's time to receive something. Listen. Listen, I told you there will be many impartations. Hear me. The anointing does not make the difference. The anointing is the difference. Are you hearing what I'm saying? No matter what you are doing, when the grace is not there, you will struggle forever. Please hear me. Especially in ministry. If you are a minister of the gospel in this place, help that please. It's time for you to catch this thing for real. It's yours for the taking. Listen, I want to pray. As I stretch my hands and pray, inside and outside, wherever you are, you must not be in ministry like fivefold. Whatever area, many of you will begin to have dreams, encounters. Listen, many of you will step into healing graces. There's no time to move one by one. But I'm going, it's one of the major assignments God gave me tonight. Please believe it. You will argue it at your own detriment. There is a cheap route. The help of God is here to lift you. The help of God is here to take you. Lift your hands, everybody. Father, I pray that in the next two minutes, let there be from the front to the back, outside, let there be strange impartations at the count of three. One, two, three. Let the wind blow right now. Receive it. Prophetic graces. Apostolic graces. Eprodosia. Dreams. Visions. Encounters. Dreams. Visions. Encounters. The word of knowledge. Gifts of the spirit. Let there be distributions. Right now. Right now. Right now. The gift of wisdom. The word of knowledge. The working of miracles. The gift of tongues. An interpretation of tongues. The gift of prophecy. Gifts of healing. Healing mantles. Receive it. Receive it. Leadership anointings. Leadership anointings. Leadership anointings. I impart it. Leadership anointings. Utterance, utterance, utterance. I release it to you. Utterance in the name of Jesus to communicate the things of the Spirit. Utterance, receive it. Utterance, I, I release upon you insight into scriptures, insight into the mysteries of the kingdom. I grant you access by grace to the mysteries of the spirit, the mysteries of dominion, the mysteries of prosperity, the mysteries of impact. Hallelujah. The final prayer I want to pray for you is honor many of you don't know what honor is honor is not the same thing as blessings you can be blessed but not honorable it says and Jabez was more honorable honor that fragrance that compels loyalty that fragrance zamatic alive lord everyone under the sound of my voice inside and outside May this grace that, that will bring honor to a man beyond your age, beyond your level, receive it now in the name of Jesus. I release it from the depths of my heart. Receive it in the name of Jesus. From today, everywhere you go, may honor follow you. And I declare these hands that are lifted like Aaron like joshua lifted up the hands of his servant moses i command may those hands never go down may the lord cut off from your life everything that will bring your hands down 
and I pray for marriages supernaturally may God connect people supernaturally in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah as it is happening to you let it happen to every one of your family members no matter where they are I prophesy as it is happening to you let it happen to every one of your family members hallelujah now very quickly you are here you've never given your heart to the Lord please hear me please keep standing everybody no moving around let's honor them just in one minute you're here inside and outside you have never made a decision for Jesus Christ or at one time you have made a decision for Jesus but you found yourself dwindling you have seen the hand of God and Jesus is calling you back home there's nothing to be ashamed of don't let any man cajole you win the war in your heart today for the sake of your destiny wherever you are please start running from your seat inside and outside and come out here I want to lead you personally to Christ and pray for you go ahead are there people like that go ahead don't look at any neighbor don't look at anyone wherever you are inside or outside don't pretend it Jesus is calling you very quickly very quickly where are those who are giving their lives to Jesus inside or outside make your way to the front don't be ashamed please appreciate them coin on you as they come God bless you keep coming God bless you keep coming no matter how far rush and make your way young and old God bless you keep coming it's time to make it right don't play games with destiny Jesus is calling you come and surrender everything totally and consciously totally and consciously please make way for them don't stop them make way for them come to Jesus hallelujah I salute and congratulate every one of you for coming out hallelujah the prayer you are praying is not reciting a poem I want you to pray from the depths of your heart lift your right hand and say after me passionately and truly say Lord Jesus I love you and I believe in you I believe you died for me you rose again for me I surrender completely to you take charge of my life from today and forever I denounce sin I denounce Satan and I receive eternal life into my spirit keep your hands lifted father receive these ones change them transform their lives radically I cause the power of sin from your life and I release grace upon you to experience that which Christ has done for you in the name of the Lord Jesus everything that keeps drawing you to sin I curse it right now in the name of Jesus God bless you thank you for this great decision please follow the ushers the gentlemen with the jerseys they will have your details and you'll be back to your seat God bless you hello beloved in Christ we hope this message was a blessing to you I would want you to do something for us if you are new here kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body to their soul and to their spirit we would need you to do one thing for us too tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from and if you've got any testimony for us kindly share with us thank you for